All right, Scott, do you want me to count you in? Sure. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 30 of the Friday Nightmares podcast. On this episode, we are going to be covering paranormal investigators <laughs> who go to a haunted house. <laughs> It's something we've brought up millions of times on this show, so we figured we'd finally do this. I am one-third of your hosting team this uh, wonderful day. Uh, I am Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from Swartz Creek. Uh, almost did it again. Swartz Creek, Creek Michigan. Ontario, Michigan, Canada. Did you know, uh, well, we'll introduce our special guest soon, but he can talk about how he just learned that there's a new province and state named, named Ontario, Michigan, that, that we've created, which is where Scott lives. <laughs> and yes, as always, you can hear my lovely host voice, Miss <laughs> Heather Powell, coming to you from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada, um, as well on this beautiful sunny day, one year into pandemic. But to to ease you from that pain, we have brought with us today the king of podcasting. This man has been known all across Horophilia, the Legion Podcast Network, and is currently available on Patreon. And I'll have to ask him where his other show is. Maybe he can talk about that because I can't remember which um, network it's being hosted of or if it's independent. He really doesn't need an introduction, but we're going to give him an introduction anyway. He has been part of four stellar shows, five stellar shows. He knows his horror. He loves VHS. He is currently running a video store out of his basement. He is Mr. Dave C. Dave C., welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. The pleasure is all mine. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. And I mean, it's no BS. I tell these two all the time. I listen to every show and it's, it's been one of my favorite newer shows the last year or two. And I love the format and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. So thanks so much. Well, we've learned so much from you, Dave. Um, I'll be honest. So I got to tell you a little story. I've never told you this story and I waited specifically till today to do this. So Ooh. I first started listening to podcasts that kill the cast and I became friends with Jerry and I said, I love your show. It's so good. He's like, you would like this other show called exploding heads. I'm like, exploding heads why isn't it called talking heads they should be called talking heads because they talk so the first couple times i listened to your episode i'm like talking heads why, why um, this should be called talking heads not exploding heads and then you did your ratings and you were like exploding heads i'm like oh i like this i think exploding <laughs> heads too um and i just totally from that point in bought into it and the first episode i listened to was your slasher episode your really? top 50 slashers oh. because I saw slashers and I was like I like slashers and I was just blown away about the amount of work and the chemistry between the three of you if you don't mind just talking about your you know, a little bit of history about all the different podcasting shows that you've been part of and where people can find you now Whew, boy history well I'll, I'll make it quick I mean, Cole's <laughs> notes Cole's nice Dave <laughs> right I'm trying let's see here holy cow okay so I got into the whole thing because of Alex Edwards who was the lead host producer editor of the skeleton crew and him and I went way back we, we met in 2004 ish back in the days of the message boards we met it on the Fangoria message boards when that was a oh, big cool. thing yeah and he started his own thing called Crystal Lake After Dark which was all about Friday the 13th. And I'm like, you know, big yep. Friday the 13th fanboy. And so is he. So we went there and it was a whole message board about Friday the 13th. We talked about anything and everything that had to do with Friday the 13th. It was like, I don't know, 40, 50 regulars. And it was, it was a great time. So anyway, he started doing this podcast called uh, Rabbit and Red, which is still around. Oh, and cool. he was doing Rabbit and Red with uh, Michael J and Vince. And then something happened. He started doing a solo, not a solo thing, but him and Mike left and they started doing this thing called the Skeleton Crew. And something happened. I was doing a lot of moving at the time and I was going from Vegas to back to Buffalo and this and that and lots of things happening in my life. And then one day he says, hey, because I hadn't been on the message boards in a while. It was kind of like becoming the, the era of Facebook and social media and stuff. This is like 2012, you know, and he mess he texted me or something. He goes, hey, man, did you ever listen to those Friday the 13 shows I did on the Skeleton Crew? I said, no. I said, I'm glad you, you brought them up now because I'm home from work today. I think I, I, I had like an ear infection and I was getting over it. And I was, but I was home, but I wasn't like bedridden sick or anything. So I said, you know what? I'm going to pick up around the house a little bit today and I'm going to listen to this thing, the skeleton crew. So I started listening to the skeleton crew and they did all 12 Friday the 13th movies. And I never heard anything like it before. Man, this is the early days. This is 2012, 13 when podcasts weren't what they are now. 
So I was so blown away by this, being the Friday fanboy that I am and hearing people talk about it. There was two things that was exciting. Number one, listening to it. Number two, when I finished, I, I, I marathoned it all one day. I couldn't stop. And I was nice. like, I told my wife, I said, you know what? I think I could do this. I, I, I want to get involved in podcasting. So about a year later, um, m- myself and Matt started Banana Laser. He was also a listener of the Skeleton Crew. So we started Banana Laser, had a lot of fun with that. Then I started guesting on the Skeleton Crew because, you know, but, but he's with Alex and everything. Mm-hmm. And then we did our run there. And then Skeleton Crew is over for, for the most part. Banana Laser had to wrap up after a few years. And then I said, I got to get my own thing going here. So I started exploding heads with Brandon and Christian. And Which right is around nice the same that you time, took Brandon on as like a pity case. That was really kind of you. <laughs> but I you get Brandon tax benefits on. for working with him? I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like a talent scout. <laughs> it's like a foster care for... It's uh, like a foster care yeah. for rescued animals. That they do. We're just kidding. We love Brandon <laughs> yeah, so much. I but... know you guys. You guys get it? He's the third host of the show. He's never been on. <laughs> that never I, shows I, I up, him, yes. Right. He's here in spirit, though, he's at all times. He's here in spirit. Absolutely. And he always comes up on the show when you're talking. So I, I know he's like... the uno- He's kind of like... um. I don't know if you're a Beatles fan, but they always used to say that that the um the fifth Beatle was their manager. And yes. it's kind of like George Martin. So he's kind of like the George, he doesn't produce it all because I know he can't, but no. he's like me. But he's kind of like the George Martin. He's kind of like the, he's he's there, but he's not really there. That's but, the best way to describe him, Dave. That you know, was perfect. That he's was perfect. the third host. But anyway, um, I don't even know. So I, it was so weird. Jamie and Brian wanted to start a new show because Skeleton Crew was wrapping up and Jamie was on Skeleton Crew. So she, they had the idea for ABC's A Hidden Horror. So they asked me, they said, do you want to do on the show? You're the first person we thought of. And number one, I was flattered. Number two, I can't say no to a podcast. Now I can, but at that time I couldn't. So I was like, okay. So I'm starting the ABC's and I'm starting Exploding Heads. And I started those two and had a lot of fun. And re- getting towards the end of ABC's, Watson over on Horror Corridor, also on Horophilia, which were all these shows were, he was calling it quits. And I said, well, this guy can't just go to waste. Mm-hmm. And I kind of, you know, I kind of missed the old days of doing a two-man show because that's what Banana Leisure was in the beginning. Yep. And I, Watson and I were such good buddies. I'm like, you know what? I have an idea for a show. I'll propose it to Watson and see what he says. Sure enough, I talked to him and Watsy was born. So <laughs> um, all, all, Horophilia sadly is shut down. So a lot of these shows I talk about, you can't even hear anymore. They have to go on an independent feed, which yep. is where Watsy is now. Watsy okay. independent. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering about I that. I thought so. I yep. just wasn't sure. I, I, the first, I remember when you guys announced that you were doing a show together and I was overwhelmed because I just, you know, and, and honestly, Dave, this just isn't because you're on the show. I put you on a pedestal when it comes to podcasting. I really re- mm-hmm. respect what you have to say. I respect who you are as a person and whether, you know, when we talked about this earlier, whether I agree with your, all your points that you bring up about movies or not, is irrelevant. I like how you present them. And when I heard that yourself and Watson were going to work together, I thought that's going to be a well-produced quality show. And even from the right off the bat, you know, it was. And I think that's what happens when you have someone who can edit as well as Watson can and produce and two people that are comfortable with podcasting and speaking come together. It's a really, really well done show. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. I also have to say, I mean, I mean, this is kind of like the, you know, let's blow Dave segment here because I got to. Mm. <laughs> so get that pan open, Dave. Let's see what we're working with. I got to I got to say. Like, now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the fluffer. <laughs> he's the fluffer. That's true. <laughs> but uh, no, I got to say, like, uh, you know, when I first started listening to podcasts, there was two shows that I like felt that made me fall in love with horror podcasting. And that was the horror show and exploding heads. Like you two were the first two shows that I had ever listened oh. to and don't listen to the horror show nearly as much as I used to anymore. Cause like their content is just kind of comes and goes now. They don't do it as often, but uh, you know, I, and obviously I'm a patron with you guys worked with you guys just last week. So like, I've been a big fan of yours since God, I'm trying to think, I think it might've been like, yeah, I think it was the 2013 top 13. So oh, I think was, laser. Yeah. Yeah. So like I started wow. there and then like found exploding heads and continued from there. And wow. yeah, I've been a fan ever since. Cause I used to work third shift and all I did was listen to podcasts for like 10 hours straight. So whenever awesome. you guys released a new episode, it was instantly downloaded and listening to it while I was working and just laughing my ass off. Cause yeah, you guys know your shit, but you're funny as fuck too, which is great. Wow, yeah. man. Thank yeah, and then, like, <laughs> it, it made my day when, like, you had, uh, because I remember when I was first starting, I did the Horror Drunks podcast, 
And right. you gave us a shout out on the exploding heads. I'm going, holy shit. Dave Z just gave us a shout out. I was telling Randall and Ken about it. I'm going, oh my God, guys. And they're going, they really didn't know much about Ooh, podcasting. Like, right. <laughs> like, they probably didn't listen to any shows. And there's no. a reason why they're not doing that anymore because of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, unless you learn and get better, right? And I'm not trying to say anything nasty, but the reality is, is like Dave, the reason why Dave's probably so good is because he also listens to a lot of other shows. Right, exactly. And that's kind of like how we are. We listen and we learn. Right. Yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, that made my day when you gave the horror drunks a shout out because I'm going, holy shit, people actually listen and people that actually like appreciate the stuff. Holy crap. <laughs> right, man. Hey, you got to do that and you got to give people that are newer, you have to give them a rub. If you have any type of audience at all and you like what they're putting out, if you, if you listen to a podcast and you don't like what they're putting out, then fine. Don't give them a rub. Don't advertise it. But if you say, hey, these guys deserve a bigger audience, then why not pay it forward? Why not share that? Maybe some of your listeners will go and give them a shot because they know that you know if they respect your show maybe they'll believe it so it's like right i wish more people would do that and i know obviously i know you guys do and it's one of the great things about the show it's it's nice to see that somebody else does it because most shows do not there's no. like a a competition thing maybe mm -hmm. but here's the here's the weird here's what i don't get i'm not gonna say that i'm no, i know i'm not this at all but I'm not a master at marketing, but I have some type of thing in my mind that I think I can see things from a marketing perspective that a lot of just regular people don't. I, I've not gone to school for it. I've done nothing, but I just, this is what makes sense to me. And I don't understand why other people don't realize it. If, for example, I shout out a podcast, okay, and my people go and listen to that podcast and like it and maybe join their group or maybe follow them on Twitter Twitter, maybe they'll have some type of interaction with A, the host who said, hey, I heard about you through this show. And they'll say, oh, I never heard of that show. What is it? Who are they? Maybe I'll check them out. Or be friend their listeners. And then, hey, you know, you guys start talking about podcasts. Oh, yeah, these guys talked about this. Oh, did you hear that so-and-so just talked about that movie um, a few episodes ago? They did a pretty good breakdown. Whatever. Conversations just arise naturally. That, in essence, you're, that is a way to help other people discover your material as well. It only seems yeah. elementary to me to do that. So especially if you're your podcasts that are of the same ilk, where it's like, like, I wouldn't go hang out with a podcast that was nothing like mine. But if they if I thought that they had a sense of humor, and they had and, and I thought they knew their stuff or whatever, I would go over there and I would infiltrate. <laughs> it's not the best, best yeah. choice of words. It might even be a little intrusive, depending I just you can't ma make it look that way. But you go and you befriend people and everything you get involved in their conversations. Hey, you know what, you like this show, in a way, it's kind of similar to the way we th do things over here, maybe just maybe here, we talked about this year, I'll put a link out there every so often. And this is what I used to do. And I think a combination of me doing that and being lucky enough to have the, the people that I've worked with all been wonderful. That's, you know, that's why I got it, downloads that I got. It just, it doesn't make sense not to do that, I don't think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Doesn't it make sense to me, to, to you guys, just to, to share it and then maybe you'll gain listeners and they'll gain listeners. And the more podcasts that get more listens, the better for all of us. Right. No. That's exactly how I look at it. Cause that's like, cause I think it was Heather's idea to bring up like, Hey, we should bring up show uh, different podcasts that we listen to. And we created that segment. And Love yeah, that. I was, cause I always like used to promote the hell out of all these show, the shows I listen to just on Facebook. So being able to do it on the show now just makes it even that much better. And like even just have their own segment for it. You know, and when we came up with the show and I'm really glad you acknowledged this Dave on, on your last, um, when Scott was on, when I met with Scott and we talked about doing a horror podcast, there was some words that you had said about if, you know, if you're going to do a podcast, make sure it's done well, try to do something unique, try to do something different. And I 100% believed in that because I can listen to 18 billion podcasts that can do movie reviews. Like I, I can find that right. To, like right now I could go on my phone and find 18 billion and that's fine. There's some people that do it extremely well and that's awesome. But I didn't want to do that. I said to Scott, if we're going to do this, I want to do something slightly different. If we're going to talk about themes with movies and we have a variety of movies and we just talk about her, how certain themes were seen in it, the closest thing we've got to a review is doing the remakes. And that was simply because of remakes and originals and comparing them. But 
I, I really appreciated that you acknowledged that because that was something that I said to Scott and adding the, what are we listening to section, what we've been watching, because it was something different. I hadn't yeah. heard personally, I'm sure there's shows out like that to do the same. I know Friday the 13th does um, something very similar as well, but it, it was just something that just wasn't, let's talk about one movie because you're right. The personality part of like getting to know the host is sometimes the most fun. Absolutely. I love yeah. that. I wish right. more shows but then again, I also like that only certain amounts do it because it separates them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's great because it's like anybody can do that. And I and I when I first started out when we started Banana Laser, we'd come out there and we would review two movies, and that was it. And there was there was nothing else. And and a lot of it was also sequential. Okay, this happened in in this part, and then this happened, and then okay, insert wisecrack here, and this and that. Okay, oh yeah, the, what, what do you what do you think this meant? And then and I'm not knocking anybody that does it, but the weird thing is, I remember Alex. He was the one that was telling me this as he was listening to the show, and I would always take any constructive criticism from him because he was the guy that started at all for me and I, I respect and I love the show so much so he was saying you know I much prefer a discussion over a, a walkthrough review and I didn't know what he meant at the time and then as time was going on with me and banana laser with us and banana laser I was like you know I go I think you're right I go everybody's doing this and, and I'm kind of getting tired of this format but I've noticed since I've switched it up and since we started exploding heads and and even what we did with ABCs and what we do with Watsi, we don't do that anymore and I have so much more fun you know, just talking about having a little discussion about it. You know, it could be Absolutely. a deep dive or it could be just, you know, Absolutely. a short thing. Yeah, because like uh, when I did the Horror Drunks and uh, Podcast by the Cemetery, like I would be obsessed with trying to take notes. And I ended up when I ended up realizing when I took notes that I was basically writing the entire movie down on paper and then just kind of going scene by scene by scene when I did reviews. And I was like, I do not like doing this. Like it's right. literally just talking about what I watched on the screen and people can just watch that at home. It's like, that's just, it's not for me. And then, right. you know, like, I don't feel like I'm the greatest at like reviewing in general. I'm, I feel I'm better just at like, just talking about the movie. And mm-hmm. I think the way that we ended up doing, ended up doing, going, uh, going with it, with our show, it just kind of worked out a lot better. Cause it just feels like people chatting about the movies they watched and just kind of like having a theme to it. I, for love, sure. I, I love the format. Now, do you still take notes? Nope. Now I just don't even bother taking notes. It's just, uh, wow. I'll watch the I movies and that. then to refresh myself, I will read the Wikipedias right before we record just to kind of refresh myself on what happened and then because as you've heard we don't go totally deep dive with our movies so i don't feel like i really need to take notes on it like maybe once in a great while i'll write something like oh i want to bring this up on the show so i'll write a little note in my notepad on my phone but it's like one or two little things and like 90 percent of the time i don't even do that wow i envy you my friend i i don't have the the mental capacity to retain unless i watched it like within 12 hours i have got to take notes otherwise I mean, sometimes it's if you're doing like a big, like when I, when I go on Exploding Heads, for example, the best shows to me are, because at least there's three of us I know, and we're all talking about the same movie. Sometimes we'll start talking and we'll talk for 10 minutes or, or plus whatever. And I haven't even looked at my phone yet. I haven't even yep, yeah. looked at my notes. That's when I know things are going good. But then sometimes I get towards the end and I'm like, let me look at my notes because there's a, maybe there's a couple of things I wanted to point out and they just left my brain. And then it, I have to get my shit in, as they like to say. I'm like, okay, wait. Oh, did you guys see when this thing happened? This was funny. And what did you guys think about this? I always do that towards the end because if I don't, if I don't, I'll listen back to the show and I'll like, oh my God, I forgot to bring up this. That would have been so, and I kick myself. I'm like, man, it yeah. would have been a better talking point so i have to do it and i know again that my mind is, is mush when it comes to getting a oh, short-term I'm, memory always has been i'm right there with oh. you like that's why i rely on this beautiful person here because she's got a memory yeah. like a steel freaking trap like an <laughs> elephant nice. Nice. <laughs> elephants don't forget like she can watch a movie like three weeks ago and still be able to talk about every scene in that movie without this is how it, it is scott is the look no 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 yeah wow no. The only time I ever took notes was the first time I went on Exploding Heads because I was really scared. Um, <laughs> of us? And I didn't, well, didn't want to look bad. And then I met Christian in person and I'm like, oh, fuck this dude. He's just <laughs> a stud. Guy. <laughs> He's just a hottie. He's the hottie of Canada. I don't need to worry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so once I got more comfortable, I hope Christian listens to this episode. I really do. Better. He listens to like five podcasts and apparently yeah. one of them is this. So hopefully he'll right. listen to this one. Um, but yeah, like I, I wanted to impress you guys because I had so much admiration for you, but yeah, I, I don't need to usually 
unless we're watching the remake one was hard because we did 12 yeah that, that was <laughs> oh, fuck, we thought that was a good idea but anyway <laughs> you live and learn i um, love that show though i think it's a great idea it might have been one of my favorite shows uh, that you guys did to be honest so. oh, well thank you oh, well thank you i'm, I'm glad you it. liked it <laughs> that means Absolutely. a lot <laughs> oh listen i mean nobody's done that first and foremost nobody sat down and said okay i mean they've done it okay we're going to talk about um the original of this versus the remake of this and they made like one episode of it fine that's been done to death almost but to have to do that many uh, you know what i mean and i don't know it's just it was really cool i mean i wish i could have been even taken part in that because that is a topic i'm really passionate about well we we messaged you quite a bit i know thank you a lot because i think that you guys give very fair reviews over some very unpopular remakes from a very objective standpoint and i think that's a talent that both you and brandon and christian have um and i think it's important like i think it's better than be like it sucked because i didn't have robert england so i didn't like the remake like that's a, <laughs> yeah the valid reason as why you didn't like a movie right like like think beyond that percent you know relevant arguments so thank you so much for being here dave again we really look yeah, forward to going through this journey with you and uh definitely promoing all your stuff um especially the new place where people can find WOTC in case for some reason they don't know where to find it. We'll include that in our show notes as well to make sure that they have a direct link. Right on, thanks. So they can listen to both of you gentlemen rock it out. So we'll share our 2020s and how we do this day. I know you listen to the show. So we 2021s. 2021s, yeah. I still say 2020s because, <laughs> well, oh, every year is the fucking same at this point. But... <laughs> <laughs> Um, we just go through them. If there's anything you want to add, if you've seen it, great. I told Scott to not give too many spoilers, Scotty, because Dave doesn't watch trailers. Yep, I'm I'm well aware, so Heather. <laughs> we're giving very little information about these movies. Yeah, but I listen to every show anyway. So it, just because I'm in the room with you this time, so to speak, don't make any. I listen to every show, and honestly, when I do listen to shows, if I start hearing anything uh, that might be mildly something, I just hit that that fast forward button and the thing, and, and then well, I we can't, can't fast forward in. Scott in person, unfortunately. So <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry about me. <laughs> So That's sometimes funny. Scott gets really excited and reads the entire synopsis of the movie and it gives it away. Yeah, I can't okay, I'm, sometimes. He gets Dude. really excited about some films, but you, you gotta okay. do it. I'm the asshole. I'm the guy that that's uptight about freaking uh, about the about being spoiled any little thing i'm in i'm in the the, the vast minority here so don't don't cater anything for my well story, you're our guest real. and we were raised yeah. with proper manners dave <laughs> you cater to your guests okay that's how oh, we fucking man. roll on this we show. just don't cater we just don't cater to each other <laughs> it's not like each other's needs we don't give a fuck about that so do you want to start off scotty or do you want me to start off um i can start off all right um so oh, yeah, I the, forgot to send you my notes. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Oh, I was supposed yeah, to tell you my all movies. you need to do is talk about the podcast you've been listening to. We'll just get to that. Oh, and then share. the 2021 in my movies. Oh, yeah. yeah just tell, tell us. You, as, yeah. If they're not listed on here, just tell us what they are. Yeah. So what uh, we'll yeah. do. Yeah. We'll get I to do that have the three end. others. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, cool. so what oh, yeah. we can do if you want is we can do me, then Heather, and then have you say one and then go me, Heather, then you say one if you want. If that okay, works Well, I see that one of mine is on your list. So I can just let that go and just do my three. Okay. And, and the one that's on the list, it was my least favorite. I was going to go in order of, of least favorite to favorite. It was my least favorite. Okay. So let it go. I'm, I'm chill. And then I'll just do the other three. <laughs> All right. Yep. And then yeah, we'll do the older ones right after our 2021s. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, we'll just jump right into that. The first one, which uh, if this one uh, I had to watch right away. And that is The Stylist. Uh, from 2021 and this is a feature film that was uh, made out of a short film that I had watched when Shudder had all these short films like up on their service I'd say probably about three or four years ago and I watched this the short film for the stylist and I'm going oh this would make an amazing feature-length horror film and then sure as shit a couple years later I started hearing news about how it's actually becoming a movie and it finally got released. Uh, this is going to be on the Arrow streaming service, I believe. And man, uh, this movie is incredible. Like it's well shot, very well acted, and just good like, script too. Yeah, great script. Like good everything writing. about this was just phenomenal. Like I will just kind of spoil it right now. This is my number two of the year right now. I just love this movie. But it is only wow. March. It is only March, but I have watched sixty. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I've watched 63, 2021. So that's saying something if it's number two. You still two. have another 500 to watch. I'll get there. I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on pace to meet, uh, beat Mark Nato. We'll see. We'll get there. Oh, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck. But uh, yeah, like, uh, have either of you seen this? Oh, I've seen it. Uh, and it's a 105 minute runtime. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's, I always enjoy when it's a female centric horror movie that's done well. Um, this is. I think it uh, it took something that we, you know, a lot of people have used at some point and uh, really expanded on it. It talked about life events really well. And yeah, it's some, <laughs> some really interesting kills as well in this film. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good movie. It, I believe it's available to only rent right now, but I'm assuming this is something Shutter's going to pick up by the end of the year. Well, no, this will be a, uh, like I said, this is streaming on Arrow Video. Is service. it on Arrow Video? Because we don't have yeah. Arrow in Canada. So, yeah, so probably maybe you're for looking Canada, at it'll be somewhere else for you. Yeah, later. it'll probably be a rental on Cineplex or YouTube or Prime eventually. Dave, have you seen this one? No, I'm aware of it. I was actually sent a, um, I want to say I was either sent uh, a screener of it from Arrow or I was sent, um, sometimes Arrow will send me these emails, these promotional emails that'll mm. just be promotional stuff for their, it's weird. They're not, it's not weird, but they're, it seems like they're promoting their streaming service a little more than their physical releases now. So it's like, I'll get like three emails from Arrow in like a, a week or two period. And two of the three will be about the streaming service and what's going to be on it. So they're really making an attempt to have exclusives there, which of course is smart. They're trying to do the shutter thing, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. So I've known about it. And when I, I was going to watch it, but I only had so much time mm -hmm. and everything I've watched so far has been for podcasts only, including yep. this one now. So when I knew I was doing this podcast, that's why I asked you guys what you've watched there. Cause I wanted to try a try to watch three or four movies that you guys hadn't seen yet. That actually interested me. So I was able to pull that off, but I was planning on watching the stylist. So I still will. Certainly. Yeah. I think yeah. you'll like it, Dave. I think this will be up your alley. Yeah, cool. enjoy this one. Yeah, yeah this is right this was like a very I was very pleasantly surprised. Did you uh, ever see the short film? No. Okay, yeah, the short film is like very very similar, like obviously, but like man, like and it's got the same actress in it and everything that plays the main in this film. So it's they brought everybody back for it, and it was just really just such a good movie and. Yeah, I got to say with Arrow Video, so far, they are two for two with me with the uh, 2021 exclusives because they seem to be picking up these indie gems because uh, a movie I brought up a couple episodes, A Ghost Waits, is also yes. an Arrow Video release. And that was for just such a low budget, micro budget film. So well done. And so, yeah, I'm happy to see Arrow Video doing this and bringing some of these like lesser known titles to the forefront. Nice. Awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. So the next one we'll talk about is a Canadian film. It was actually released in Canadian theaters last year. Um, fortunately, I didn't get a chance to go see it because it was released in a theater that wasn't near me and the whole COVID thing and theaters are open at different points. But anyway, it's called Slack. Um, it's a 77 minute runtime and it's basically makes fun of the consumerism culture. It makes fun of the fair trade culture uh, and it makes fun of millennials. And I find it hilarious, but you have to walk into this knowing that it's very much a sarcastic comedy with a social commentary about those three things. Uh, if not, it may annoy you, but uh, the characters are meant to be over the top because of what they're making fun of. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, just just the idea of killer genes. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So you got to go in going, okay, this is going to be a silly topic, kind of like a rubber, the one about the killer tire. Mm. So like, you go in just going, okay, I'm gonna expect something very silly. Mm -hmm. thankfully it's not as silly as rubber is because oh that movie hurt my head but uh, that's a movie for a different day um but yeah i agree slacks was really well done and like hilarious and was great at making fun of like the culture of these high-end retail stores and stuff like that and yeah this, and millennials and consumers millennials, and, yeah and it was definitely a hit at a popular canadian retail store called roots this was definitely <laughs> a jab at Ooh. them um which is funny if you know the root store and you know what they represent have you seen this at all um dave it's on shutter now no i've been holding off again uh the thing with this one is you guys know that i don't like goofy comedy type mm, stuff yeah you may not so, take this one however i st i still am intrigued like rubber i was never gonna watch i knew that yeah and just based on everything I i've heard so i have not watched it but i'm intrigued anyway because if it's tongue-in-cheek comedy and it's something that's taking a jab at 
consumerism, which is something that I have a, a strong opinion about. Uh, see, that, that's, that's what's intriguing to me. Anytime it's a social commentary, and it's you don't see a lot of social commentary on consumerism, I don't yeah. think. You see it. I agree. In, you know, you don't. It, most, of the, most of the commentary you, you see now is the same tired thing we've been seeing for three years, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the consumerism mm -hmm. thing, this goes back to you know, 70s and stuff like that when they were doing things here and there and, and, and Romero and others. So I, I am, I probably am going to watch it just because it's on Shutter and it's something that people are watching. Uh, Brandon didn't like it, I don't think, but. No, he didn't you know. dig it. Well, yeah, I'll say, he, well, he, he turned around lot, by maybe. the second half. Yeah? Yeah, because I do remember he disliked the first half, but then by the second half, he was enjoying it more from what I remember him saying. Which is why I've kind of added my disclaimer that there is some very much over-exaggeration of millennials um, and their dialogue in this film. It's um, okay. <laughs> right? So you have to be able to handle that or find that funny. But at a 77-minute runtime, you're not spending okay. a lot of time. You know what I mean? Like, it, it keeps it short and it's smart. It doesn't drag it out longer than essential which i i think is really important for a film know what you are and make your time like matter don't drag it out for additional time that doesn't need to be there yeah i think this Amen. film is smart that way so yeah if you get a chance to watch it probably by the end of the year dave i would say give it a give it a watch for sure i might watch it with frankie actually because yeah she would probably dig it fun yeah, yeah i think she would millennials, have millennials yeah although she's generation z so it's hard to say but she pokes a lot of fun at the trends of the yeah. people her age because I think she, she watches like youtube this. so uh, she sees a lot of stuff on youtube and she always makes cracks granted she still talks like they do to a degree but she also she's so much like me that she just was born rebellious and she just can't <laughs> help but rebel against trends. It's and I don't tell her it has anything to do with me, but I know this is how I was and am. And she's the same way. So I'm like, maybe she's gonna be interested. And in, if it's making fun of modern things, she may not understand the the, the commentary uh, on the other stuff. I think she so will. Like, I think your daughter's pretty bright. Yeah, from what I've heard her talk, I think she'll get it. Um, I don't think she'll get the added piece. Like I think unless you're Canadian and you put together which clothing retailer they're making fun of. Um, right. that's a little bit of a thing i don't think christian would get that though <laughs> he'd be like what the fuck are you talking about heather but they were definitely <laughs> digging at this yeah. that's why i'm killer. And that's why i'm glad that i have heather as uh, someone that i go to when i talk about movies because she'll bring up these points and i'm going oh so i'm going to look into this roots uh root store real quick and i'm going ah i get oh, yeah. it okay yeah, like very much so but yeah i get her to watch it and then maybe on exploding head see what she thought of it all right okay yeah i can do that no for sure yeah, he really like, wants to watch that movie that you guys talked about a couple weeks, a couple episodes ago. Um, uh, the one with Nicolas Cage, the, um, the oh, oh, Willie's Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. That's a fun film. Yeah, so I'll probably check that with her first, and then maybe next week get onto the Slacks. Awesome. Yeah, I'll say, and then yeah, Slacks just got released on Shutter. So yep, it'll be avail. It should be available to everybody. Uh, did you check to see if it's available in Canada? On oh Shutter? yeah, it's on Canadian Shutter and it's on okay. Direct TV. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go to Dave Z. You, uh, what was one of the ones you brought? Okay, uh, let's see. I have three. Here's one. Oh wow. Oh boy. See, I would not have watched this if I would have waited because it's 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 currently at a three point eight out of ten on the B. And when oh. that happens, I don't watch things below a four. So, but because of like I said, I was trying to keep up with with, with the big dogs here. I was like, <laughs> you know, I I was like, I'm gonna watch these movies. I, I Scott keeps his letterbox on point, so I know what he he's watched. I don't know what Heather's watched, but I but I noticed that she is a little bit vocal about it on social media or in yeah. chats or else. So I'm like, okay, these yeah. are some movies I haven't heard anything about. So I actually paid to rent this one. I paid like four or five dollars to rent it, and it's called The Heiress. Now oh. Ooh, I haven't heard I don't of this think, one. I don't think yes. I don't think it's so bad as a 3.8. Matter of fact, I don't think it's bad at all, but I'll read the synopsis because like I said, my mind is mush. But um, this is what it says. Claire and Anne. Claire and Anna, pardon me, are devoted sisters who live together. Claire suffers from fits, and Anna cares for Claire between time at work and seeing her boyfriend. However, when Claire begins to see ghostly visions within the house, Anna has difficulty believing her. As the visions worsen, they test Claire's sanity, until one night she mistakenly attacks Anna, believing her to be one of the ghosts. Claire is hospitalized, but the visions continue to haunt her. But Claire was never the... Okay, that's spoiler. Okay, <laughs> so what, what carries this movie is the struggle on, on the lead. Uh, her, her, like, I, her, like I said, her name is Claire, and she has a struggle going on between her... See, her parents see things a certain way. This is a movie from uh, the UK. 
Okay. And her her father is concerned about mental health of hers, taking the scientific approach. And her mother thinks that she needs to get right with God, that, you know, some faith can help her. So the age old, you know, science versus um, spirituality, it comes in there. And then she has to worry about her sister who is also there. And this woman is kind of at home. Um, she, she's had, work is making her stay at home. Her grandmother just passed away and she was really close with her grandmother. And the result of that, she, they, they, and I know it's kind of, at least I, I can't keep up with all of it, but I, I don't know if it's um, politically correct to use the word fits. I don't know, but that is what they, that, that's what they say time and time again throughout this movie. That's the only word they use. It seems to me that it's like, it's more like a epileptic thing, uh, oh, but, gotcha. but, but combined with stress, like, uh, like a seizure thing brought on by a panic attack. You know okay. what I mean? Like she doesn't get on the floor and start shaking around. It's hard to explain exactly what, what, what happened, but it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of mental stuff going on with her and the events of her grandmother passing. Uh, I guess she's had a couple of these fits and people, her work has told her to stay home for a short time. Mm -hmm. So now we have her sister who's closest to her and she has this boyfriend and the boyfriend is kind of, in my opinion, I know where he's coming from, but he does come off insensitive. It's almost like, you know, in, in Midsommar when um, the, his friends are telling him, hey, listen, it's, it's not your fault. She's going through her, th her, her issues. That's what her shrink is for. You don't have to be there at her every beck and call. You're enabling her. It's kind of like the thing that's going on there. Her boyfriend is trying to get her to, to pull away from her sister who's having these issues more and more and saying, she's running your life. I love you. I want to spend my time with you. I don't want to share everything about your sister. Every time she calls, you come running. So this girl, Claire, has all this stuff pulling, her hair, pulling at her at once, and she's seen these visions since her grandmother died. And as it goes on, we learn more about some things with her grandmother, and of course, it's a horror movie, so it goes down a certain path, and you could probably, in a way, guess what's going to happen. But I'll tell you what, the more I talk about it, I actually like it. It's definitely, I, I would still recommend it. I think it's worth, it's worth checking out. Uh, I, I think one, maybe both of you will, will like it. It's hard to say, you know, like the other movie I'm going to talk about, I have a, a complete, I, I don't think you guys will like it, even though I did. But this one here, I think it can go either way because it's it's more of a character piece about this girl. And I think it's it's kind of an interesting story. That's so awesome. It's called The Heiress, and you can rent it on um, basically anywhere. I think I rented it on Prime. Yeah, I looked it up yeah. while you were chatting because it's available on Amazon, Google, Vudu, YouTube, and uh, Microsoft Store. So it's available everywhere to rent. So if anyone's interested, you should be able to choose one of those avenues to rent it so thanks for bringing that dave yeah that's i am, really appreciate it i am yeah, that, that was my goal gonna, you're welcome <laughs> i am definitely going to be checking this out because that sounds very interesting and up my alley cool it's very british i'll tell you that it's very british and it's um you know it's, it, it's cool you, you i think you guys will dig it but it's hard to say it's hard to say we'll see right, but you know me i pretty much will give most things a shot as long as they're not awful scott will try anything once that's true everybody i, Just clear. <laughs> I mean i am anything a smoke once. show Smoke show, smoke show lives his life by trying anything once. Right. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> All right. So, Heather, I'll let you bring in the this next movie since uh, it's very fresh in your head where I watched it last year because of the Shutter sneak peek thing. Yeah, because you're a balla balla. That's why. Yeah. So Lucky is a, it was recently dropped on Shutter about, I guess it would be a week and a half ago now. It's an 83 minute runtime. And, um, it's a very interesting film. It's very much a social commentary on um, issues that uh, tend to face women. Uh, personally, it was a difficult watch for me because some of the things I haven't personally experienced. So I was able to kind of engage in it in probably a very different level. I think this this female this this movie was written by a woman, directed by a woman, and made for women, and that's fine. Uh, I felt the same way about Homewrecker last year when it came out, that it was very much a female-centric film that was geared towards heterosexual females. And I think there's some really good messages in this. Do I think everyone's going to walk into this film and like it? Absolutely not. I think some people may find it very confusing. Um, some people may find it triggering. Some people may find it the message too strong. Whatever the case may be, I do think the acting in it is good. I do think the writing is fairly decent. Um, 
but I do think this is definitely geared towards towards females. And it's available on Shutter, uh, both regular Shutter and Shutter Prime for a watch. Uh, what did you did you gentlemen want to chime in? Any thoughts on it, generally speaking? Um, for me, I, I remember when I watched it last year. So like, like I say, it's very foggy in my head, but I found it just very confusing mm. when you explained like what it was and like just going through the step. Well, what step. it was that I was reflecting that they were talking about. Yes. Yeah. Well, when you explained it that way, I was going, okay, from what I remember, this mo- this makes so much more sense. I want to go back and give it a rewatch now that it's considered a 2021 watch. I can kind of watch it and see and see if I get a different perspective on it now. Because when I watched it, that went right over my head. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, right? And I think depending what your experiences are, or you may feel this message is too much, you know, it really is going to depend, but I do think it's a well-acted film and the main actress in it, yeah, uh, Brie Grant, Grant, I think she does a great job. Dave, did you want to throw in any thoughts? Well, uh, I, I watched this movie for one reason and one reason only, and it's the title. Um, <laughs> my oh, big yeah. kitty cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to watch a movie called Lucky for My Little Boy, you know, so I did watch that. Uh, did you happen to hear when we discussed it when I guessed it on the, the Rotten Roundtable? No, not think. yet. No. no. I'm actually oh. halfway through that episode. I have not got to your pick on that one yet. Okay. I, I wish you did. Someone else picked it and we all talked about it and we all felt the same way. So I was relieved, especially since one of them uh, is Tammy, a female. Yeah. So at first I kind of I kind of held back a little bit. And then when she opened up, I said, okay, now I feel a little more comfortable saying this. The first half of it, I really enjoyed. It was almost like a Twilight zone type thing. And I was on board with the narrative. And then I think the message, I remember when What Do You Call It came out and everybody said that the message was like extremely strong and I didn't. It was that. Oh, Black Black Christmas Christmas 2019. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here's what, what everybody said about Black Christmas, I didn't watch it until I had to for a guest that I cut to the chase. And when I saw it, I'm like, hmm, that really wasn't nearly as as overpowering as I thought the way people are talking. I said one character was, but as a whole, I don't see it that strong. I thought what happened in the second half of this one, that's what that was. was Oh, it was a very strong message right Um, it was very yeah and i i agree with that message but at the same time i wouldn't fault someone if they didn't like the movie like i feel like this movie was definitely made for a specific audience um and even the writing at times like there was some lines and because i'm trying so hard to stay away from spoilers right that i i got what they were saying i did get it um i think most people got it And I did agree with it, but I could understand where someone would be like, this is too much. So this is really going to come down to personal preference. (laughs) How do you feel about this film, right? You know what scene I liked, Heather, really liked was when her agent or whatever his, his name is came to the door and he said something to her. He said something to her and she corrected him saying, what do you mean lucky? And then she said this and that. I did this and I did that. I... I believe that does happen. I believe it has happened and it, it will continue and it's yeah. a shame. That is something that to me, I'm on board with. What I wasn't on board with was basic, again, without spoiling, basically saying how every one of these people has to deal with one of them who's like this in their life. Yeah. It's almost like a- It was very much it, a blanket it, statement. Yeah, yeah, it was. it's negative vibes, man. That, that's the yeah. way I took it. It was like, yeah. and if, if I was to make a movie and switch it and say, okay, let's put a bunch of these people in this situation and have, and every one of them have one of these to deal with of their mm-hmm. very own that's doing this and this, people would hate me. They would say, oh my God, this guy is a misogynist, this and that. So anything to me that's sending negative vibes out that way, that can be, it's just, it, I'm going to have a little issue. You know who explained it best? Duncan McLeish mm-hmm. said- said this when he, he did a little brief review on it. And he says, well, there's this going on and this going on. He says something about mansplaining taking place. And he goes, well, he goes, by the end of this movie, I felt like the movie was mansplaining to me. That's yeah. what he said. Hmm. And and I'll leave it at that as to not be controversial. I just thought it was a little heavy handed, but not oh, it's a, a, it's a hundred percent heavy handed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, to walk right? lightly because I know you enjoyed it and you agreed with parts of the message. Yeah, there, so I, like, I get the message you know? and it's because of my experience, right? So I right. think I'm reflecting on personal experience, which is why, but I can appreciate on how that message can be heavy handed for people and turn them off, right? I think you have to like, that's why I feel like this movie is either you're going to dig it or you're going to not. And I think that's fine either way. Either you're going to find it too much or you're going to find it just right. And that's fine either way. Like, I really don't think there's a, you know, unless people walked out of this movie and was like, 
what's the problem? You can, you know, smack a bitch if you want to. That might be, you know, a reaction <laughs> oh that I would be like, no, I don't think that's a good way to walk out of Lucky. Um, but I think no. that, <laughs> or anything, <laughs> or anything, right? But like, yeah. I, I think yeah. that it was, and I will always, when I saw at the end that it was written and directed by women, I'm like, this was, this was done from somebody that's experienced some kind of trauma. This was written, I 100% believe, from a trauma perspective and was a way of them dealing with it. And that's fine. But that's why yeah. I think it was so heavy handed. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. People will have to watch it and check it out themselves. I don't think there's anyone, anything anyone could say to me. I would never be offended if someone didn't like it and found it too much. I think that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, but that's yeah. something I'm going to have to rewatch because it's very foggy in my memory when I watched it. Which, though, just looking back, this was a very weird, strange film to release on Halloween night as their sneak preview yeah. from Shutter. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I didn't quite get that. <laughs> I don't get how that was a Halloween themed film. I think this, yeah. this could have been released, list, like, this could have been released during other maybe acknowledgements. Yes. Uh, not necessarily Happy Holidays, but something like that would have made a lot more sense then yeah I, I thought it was night, very but... yeah, I thought it was very <laughs> odd choice for them to, I think that's kind of why I was like not feeling the movie because yeah. I was on Halloween night and I'm going this is not what I was expecting <laughs> well and it could also just not be your jam right, right. like you could have found the message too too much and that's okay um that was their purpose though they're definitely their purpose was to make the message heavy-handed so people yeah. are either going to be you know into that or not and that's completely fine so it's on shutter though it will be interesting to see how it goes this year and i think um yet again the main actress in it, it's getting around a lot she wrote the yeah. film as well yep. definitely and got some talent yeah i was saying she's one of my favorites from my number one film from last year after midnight yep yeah she's a very oh, she was in woman. that okay yep. yeah she's in a cool. lot of stuff now yeah. i'm like i was shocked to find out how much she's in because she was also in the stylist yeah she was she's in the wow. stylist as well yeah she's really she's really uh add into her resume so who knows what else we'll see from her now this yeah. one you watched scott right yeah i think you watched it as well from what i've seen on your letterbox yes oh oh okay this should be interesting then. This is where uh, Dave talks about us being more selective. He's right. <laughs> All right. All right. So this one is not heavy handed. So this is just. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie is called The Devil Below, a group of four amateur adventurers who specialize in exploring remote and forsaken places. Pay a visit to Shookham Hills, a town in the remote Appalachian Mountains, which has abandoned, which was abandoned decades ago due to a mysterious coal mine fire. Um. This basically, I went into this going, all right, this seems like uh, your basic creature features type monster movie. And that's pretty much what this is. There's nothing really special about this film, but it was just an easy watch. The acting was fine. The setting, I like the whole mind shaft, like something happening in a mind type setting because it's very claustrophobic. Um, and I thought the creature design for this monster was pretty interesting as well and kind of had some... Uh, grossness to it mm -hmm. but uh yeah it's just low budget fair um they did what we talked about before on low budget where you know they don't show the creature much and when they do show it it's hidden in shadows a lot or hidden with dark light or like a reddish light to kind of mask like the low budgetness like they use their budget wisely i feel but you know this isn't going to be oh my god everybody needs to see this this was just kind of like a i watched it and yeah it was fine i had i had fun with it i i didn't regret my time with it at all but it definitely sounds like Heather, on the other hand. <laughs> I don't remember anything about this movie. It's an 87, <laughs> it's an 89 minute runtime. Listen to Sky. I remember nothing. It didn't matter. Yep. So, <laughs> and, that, and that's saying something if the brains here has not, cannot remember it. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah I don't remember. I don't remember. Like it, basically, you summed it up. It was okay. It, it wasn't anything horrible. It just wasn't my jam. Um, it, you can find it, though, on Google, Voodoo. Uh, Microsoft Store and YouTube. Scott, what would you say a rental price? I would say dollar ninety nine, two ninety nine, maybe. Like so, the amount that someone would pay for a night with you. Oh, I hope they'd pay a little more, <laughs> even though I'd be willing to give it away for free. That's true, right? <laughs> true, That's true. Who are we kidding? <laughs> <laughs> and Dave, did you want to throw one out there? Well, I'll say this first of all about that last movie. Uh, I'm gonna be a total Dave Z here and say. I took one look at the cover and said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, I, just, I, I don't do the Dave Z test. Like, it, I know. The cover <laughs> reminds me of Tremors, doesn't it? 
Like, doesn't it, it does. kind of look like Tremors? Only in a way, yeah. It? <laughs> right. It reminds me of Tremors with Feast. Yes, right. The thing is a little feasty. Yeah, you're right. But something <laughs> about the artwork, the way it looks, and just I can't get into it. You got to listen to Wadzi to to get into the details of that game. But uh, there was hey. enough for me. Uh, yeah, because okay. I, I look at it because like I, I do love that whole cover test with you because like, you it seems to steer you in the correct direction a lot of the time. It is tried and true. I, I wouldn't pimp it so much if I if if if, if that wasn't the case. But and now Watson's figured it out, and I know there's some other believers out there now. So slowly, this is gaining a little the cult bit of, of sea. It's never going to make a new horror movie. The cult of C. Cover oh. test. He judged your cover. He didn't watch your movie, and that was the end. <laughs> Coming soon to theaters, 2020. I'm um, sorry, Dave. What's your awesome. what's your movie? Awesome. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, okay, my movie is called Come True. Hmm. Have you guys seen this? Hopefully, no. Not. Nope. Okay. I, I just heard about it yesterday, though, so I haven't. Done, <sighs> but I haven't heard anything about it yet, though. I just heard the title. Mission accomplished. All right, Come True. Okay. <laughs> Um, a teenage runaway takes part in a sleep study that becomes a nightmarish descent into the depths of her mind and a frightening examination of the power of dreams. Okay, I will say this. Uh, technically, it's done really well. It's okay. dark. It has some haunting imagery, some trippy stuff. Definitely not going to be for everyone because everything that's going on in the narrative and the way it's explained at the end, a lot of people are going to have a lot of problems with. But I enjoyed it. The, the lead... Uh, her name, she, the character is called Sarah. I had to look her up because I was so impressed with her performance. Her name is Julia Sarah Stone. Uh, she's actually from uh, Vancouver, BC. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So I think this uh, this actress has a uh, a bright future here. I think her performance was uh, was top notch. It, it, it's you know she's the central character. She's going. She volunteers for this thing where they pay you twelve dollars an hour to sleep and. She's a runaway. You see her. She goes into her parents' houses, parents' house when they're not there. We don't know why. That might be a complaint that we don't get enough, um, you know, information on why she ran away from her house and why she is the way she is. I don't always need that in a movie. Sometimes I just like a movie. Okay, it's going to be placed on this date of time. Boom, here we are, and that's all I need to know. She's a runaway, that's fine. To me, that explains that she's yearning for something, and mm -hmm. it's one more reason for her to need a place to sleep. So that's enough for me. I don't need all that stuff. Some people are going to watch this movie and say, I wish they would have spent less time on some of the dream stuff and more time on the character and why she ran away. And I understand that, but for me, it didn't matter. Ultimately, what happens here is, you know, she's getting paid to sleep in these things overnight and they're, they're hooking up monitors to her and other people take part in this study that's been going on for years. They don't tell you why. And you start seeing things that apparently appear worldwide in everybody's dreams, a same creature looking thing. And it's happened since the beginning of time. And they had this new technology where you you can put something on somebody's brain and you can basically see what their brain is seeing by way of just what's in their head or by way of their vision itself. So when they're, it's really interesting, but again, it's not going to be for everybody. And the thing is when the movie ends and the way it ends and the explanation for some of the things that have happened here, too many people are going to see that and they're going to see that as a cop-out ending and they're going to say, oh, that's it. That's what they're doing here. All oh, that sucks. Like, Heather, I don't think you'll like it at all. I think the ending will completely turn you off. Scott's more of a wild card with things like this, and I, <laughs> I think he may like it. He may like it. But the thing about this movie is that this is the movie I thought about the most. When the movie ended, I was like, okay, that's kind of kind of kind of cool. I'd like to go back and see how this led to this. And the more I thought about what they said at the end, what the reason was, it kind of got me empathetically thinking about people that have to go through this. And I'm like, man, I wonder if it is like that. I wonder if this it, so for the next day I'm at work and it kept popping into my head. I don't think it's anything to write home about. It's not going to make my top 10, but it's different and it's interesting. I just think that that the cop-out ending to a lot of people is what's going to bother them. But to me, initially, like I said, it didn't, it wasn't a, it didn't bother me, but I was like, I wish they wouldn't have done that. But then I started thinking about it the next day. I'm like, you know what? That was kind of cool. So I'll leave it at that. It's called Come True. And I think you could rent it basically anywhere. Wow. Yep. Seven Google Play, Voodoo, Microsoft Store, YouTube, and Amazon. So. Um, or sci-fi. Uh -huh. The cool. That's cool. Yeah, Thanks for bringing that, Dave. Yeah, I will You're definitely welcome. check it out just because, like you said, I am the wild card. So I like, I, and I do tend to like a lot more movies than most people do. Like, I am a little more lenient 
So um, we'll be getting probably into a couple more where Heather and I will be bumping heads a little bit, I'm sure. <laughs> bumping heads, bumping heads. Bumping uglies. <laughs> yeah, that kind of podcast. Um, it always is. <laughs> always is. That's how, we, that's how we roll. All right, I guess it's your turn, Scotty. All right, so the next one, I just love the title. Uh, it is a Shutter exclusive called Stay Out of the Fucking Attic. <laughs> Yep. Or also stay out of the attic, as it is on Letterbox, I believe. Yeah, they, they didn't have fucking on Letterboxd. Well, they they, I didn't have it in the Google Notes either, because, you know, I like yeah. to keep things J-friendly, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, now, this one is basically about a team of, like, three uh, ex-cons that who have uh, served their time and are now just kind of becoming, they are have started a business where they are just kind of doing their movers and they're helping people move stuff like that. And the main guy kind of like hires on these ex cons because he was one as well, but he's trying to give them a job after they get out and have done their time. And they go to this like very big mansions, like style house and this creepy old dudes there talking about, yeah, I need you to get everything out of this house by tomorrow morning. So they're having to stay overnight to box everything up and move it out. And while they're the, while they're there, he's like, stay out of the basement and stay out of the attic. Don't worry about that stuff. That's me. Just get the first and second floors done and, you know, get out of here. I'll pay you extra. And of course, while they're there, they start hearing weird noises and like seeing things out of their corner of their eyes and just like things just start getting strange. And of course, you know, like typical horror movie fashion, no one listens to the whole stay out of the basement, stay out of the attic scenario and bad shit starts happening. I have to say, this was a lot of fun. I went in not really knowing what type of movie this was going to be. And holy shit, I was really surprised. Like, this was just a blast from very, from beginning to end. The acting was all really well. Um, and it's pretty horrific in some scenes with some of the things they show. They got some nightmarish visuals going on. And like, it's just got this very creepy atmosphere throughout and the house itself is just very creepy and unsettling because some places look really nice and fancy. And then some places look all dingy and dirty and just like very disturbing looking like creepy, like just gross bathrooms you'd find in like an abandoned house or something like that. Um, but or a yeah. restaurant in Flint. Yeah, or a restaurant. In Flint. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I've been to places like that. You're not wrong. <laughs> they make the best food, but but you don't want setting. to do anything else there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I highly recommend this film. I don't want to give too much away, but there is a film that this uh, I want to compare this to. But even comparing it would spoil it. So I'm okay. just. But I would say like, give this movie a watch. It is really, really well done. And you, Heather, you've seen it too, right? Yeah, I have. I I first when I started watching, I'm like, oh, what is this piece of shit? And then it got better. It got real good. It's an 80 minute runtime. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's fun. It's quick moving. If you want to watch something that's going to move quickly and doesn't require a lot of brain power, I would definitely recommend this. The visuals are great. The acting is decent for what it is. And it's available on Shutter, both Canada and the United States, AMC Plus in the United States, Shutter Amazon in the United States, and DirecTV. Have you seen it, Dave? Oh, I plan to. I yeah, I think do. you'll like it. It's fun. It's yeah, I think, fun. yeah, I think this will be a yeah. good one for you to check out. Yeah. All right. I can dig it. And All right, the Heather. next one. Ugh, we're not going to talk about this one for long. No, no, we're not. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Because Dave's like, the <laughs> fucking cover, Heather, if you just yep. listen. And joined my cult and drank the Kool-Aid and stopped watching shitty covers. And you know what, Dave? <laughs> you may be right. Um, Dreamcatcher. Uh, it stole my dreams of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Will to live. I'm just kidding. It's not that bad. Uh, uh, see worse. Uh, it's a 90-minute runtime. It's a, it's a slasher. It's okay. I think if you really dig slashers and you know, maybe you watch all of them. This might be something that you want to watch. It's a very basic plot, you know, a little bit of a revenge stuff kind of tied into it. A little bit, sprinkle a little bit of drugs, sprinkle a little bit of tank tops on people, sprinkle, sprinkle some good looking people. You know, it's, it's, it's good enough if you like to watch some hotties run around and get stabbed. So you can find it on Google, Voodoo, Cineplex, or YouTube. 
Um, and as I said, if you're a big slasher fan, I would recommend it. If if not, then I would really stay away. And I when I say big um, slasher fan, I mean like you like all slashers from like the 2000s and the 2010s and tens and and onwards, and you want to be a completist. I would. Uh, if not, I wouldn't even bother. I'm I'm not. I wouldn't even bother even then. Like, yeah, you would, Scott. Shut the fuck up. You can totally rent this. Stop lying because Dave's here and you're trying to impress him. No, no, I was gonna. Say, <laughs> I was gonna say when I watched this, for one, you didn't bring up this, and I have to bring it up. The main girl, oh, I hate her. You fucking hate her. And you don't even like. You're not supposed to hate her. I think you're supposed to like her. I don't even know what you're supposed to do with her. But anyway, no, but she's, she's just there. Yeah, she's an awful person. Like I just couldn't stand her. Couldn't get behind her. And then it gets confusing and weird. It makes you go, wait, is this happening or is this not happening? And that's very convoluted mess. And then the ending pissed me off where I was just like, oh, when I messaged uh, Heather about this movie, I said, all right, this movie was tolerable, but fuck that ending. That ending no, was said, stupid. This is my top 10 movie of the oh, year. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> no, this movie <laughs> is like something I'm telling everybody, just don't even waste your time because it's just, I. it had some decent visuals. I will give it that. But some like, good beats. Yeah, and the good beats, but like even the uh kills weren't anything special. It was just a mess. And yeah, I do not recommend this one at all. Ha, that do fucking you have... cover. <laughs> oh. like, you know, you know what it reminds me of, dude? Uh did you guys ever see that movie Smiley? Uh yes, I did. I did, I did, I did not Smiley. actually. It looks like the cover for Smiley, but that type of face and yeah. it's even it's even a worse cover than Smiley. I didn't even think it was possible. Smiley's a better movie. That yeah. tells you right. <laughs> okay. I believe so it. Dave. <laughs> yeah. No yeah, Smiley is a better movie. One. Yeah. Now, Dave, I know the one you said that the one that you were referring to is already up here. Do one of them is, yeah. I still okay. have one more, but I can wait. Oh, that's perfect. No, go ahead. Here. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had another one. Okay. So yeah. this one here, this one I actually enjoy the most. And it's not a typical horror movie, but it's called Happy Times. Hmm. I see. I set out to, to do this and it worked. <laughs> yeah, because I don't right. think I've heard of this one. That was the plan. All right. I still got those old skills that when I used to be like you guys and I watched everything, I still went to my, <laughs> I still knew where to search. Okay. Happy Times. A seemingly friendly dinner party erupts into a night of violence and terror at a lush Hollywood estate. Okay. Now, this is a movie. It's, uh, there's a, okay, I want to say that they're, they're all Jewish people uh, and the language, and, and they are speaking Hebrew. Yes, throughout. There's is Brandon there? Yeah, was Brandon there? <laughs> With his hair? What? Right? Oh, he should have been. No, Brandon <laughs> wouldn't fit in here. These are people that have money. <laughs> 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 Hashtag truth. Hashtag truth. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they're like Israelites. They're like these people that I used to see that gamble in the casinos when I was there. It, the casting for the lead guy is perfect. He looks just like a uh, a businessman that, that that's an Israelite that I, that I would see come in. Everything about him, he, he looks so much like it. But they live in this nice area. Uh, sometimes they speak English because one of the characters, it's kind of one of those movies where like 75% of the time they're, they're, they're speaking Hebrew, but also they break in and out of English because some of the characters speak a little, a little of it. But bottom line is this, it's, it's listed as an action comedy horror and the comedy is very light, but it's one of these movies where it's, they go to this dinner and it, the guy has a lot of money and it's him and his wife. And uh, I think one of his siblings and, and and their spouse, and then there's someone that works for the guy, and he he works in the office with the husband and wife who own the house. And there, there's talk of this rabbi coming by, and this one guy comes in, and he's kind of like a black sheep, but he's not. He just has a different. He's not as die hard about the faith as they are. He's kind of outspoken about how he doesn't believe what it says in their um you know in, in their texts, their religious texts. And they're getting ready to pray before dinner. And he says, you know, he, he calls everything out. Yeah, doesn't it say this and that? And it degrades women and this. So he's very much opposing what, you know, the religious right of, of this group. And, but they're all related, so they don't make it a big deal. So they're, they're kind of used to it. That's just him being him. And he brings a girl there who also is not um, Hebrew. Um, uh, she's mixed. I, I believe she's African-American and something else. I don't remember exactly what, but one thing leads to another. There are some arguments that ensue, and it's it's really interesting to watch this as like a fly on the wall to see what happens here. 
And I can't really give anything away, but I will say this is the kind of movie that I consider fun. We get some bloody kills and we just to see, we just get to see shit hit the fan uh, throughout the whole movie. And it's just fun in that respect. So I will recommend it. If you're going to watch one movie uh, of all the ones that, I, that I've spoken of, I would say that that's the one to check out. It's called Happy Times. It's on Prime. I know that much. Yeah, and, and it's um, on YouTube and Google. All right. Yeah, this this sounds like uh, something else that I would really enjoy because I've noticed there seems to be a new subgenre of subgenre of horror, and that is these dinner party uh, movies where things happen. And I, ca- I kind of want to do an episode on this at some point, like just dinner party horror, because right? I do s- tend to enjoy a lot of these types of movies when it's this type of uh, scenario. I think it would be a kind of a fun one to talk about at some point for sure. <laughs> yes. And there's nothing supernatural or there, it isn't like the invitation where there's a cult thing going on or anything like that. Mm. It's just, there's reasons for things happening. It's just family squabbles and work squabbles and people that are, uh, you know, not being faithful to them, e- to each other, either in marriage or in uh, business. And, you know, it's, it's, inter- it's an interesting watch and it's fun. And, and there's some, some fun kills in it. So cool. well, nice. And I will, yeah, Dave. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, I'm loving, Thomas. I'm loving hearing about these films I've never heard of before. It's that's kind of exciting. Actually, Scott's really for. mad and now he's writing them down. He's going to watch them before he goes out tonight <laughs> on super speed. Just so he <laughs> yeah. can be caught up. <laughs> right. <laughs> you think you shall beat me, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is great. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I did watch of the three I watched, of the four I watched, three of them do, I, I, to give the, the, the rating, they, they are seven or higher. So they did, oh, nice. I, I did, I did yeah. do the right thing. I think they're all right at a seven. I think happy times I give a seven and a half, but I mean, so at least I picked the right ones. The other one, which is on your guys list, yeah, which we're going to talk about. It, it, it wasn't bad. It just not exactly a seven, but yeah. um, we'll get to that one. Absolutely. Oh, I'm excited. All right. So I guess uh, it is my turn again. And I think this is one that all three of us have watched. Um, but that is the Block Island Sound. What's controlling the town on Block Island? There's a forest lurking off the coast and the wildlife and people are all behaving strangely. Uh, this is apparently available on Netflix, which I did not realize. And only Netflix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. This was a very interesting movie. Like it Gave, I will say right off the bat, this gave me kind of a Lovecraftian vibe um, with because like basically it's about this guy that's pretty much uh, taking care of his father who's just been acting strange at night and will just kind of wander off and then like come back and not remember what he did. And like, then his son starts kind of act, having the same situation happen to him, like where he's just hearing these like deep rumbling sounds and like it's just very a very atmospheric sci-fi horror mystery is how i would kind of put this because like yeah they people like start seeing like all these all the fish that start showing up on the shore dead and like they have other people there that are investigating what's going on with the fish and but like this is one that kept me engaged from beginning to end i was very fascinated and kind of curious to figure out what this mystery of this noise that's making people act strangely was and like it doesn't really give you a true answer on what that is but like i love the way this plays out from the very beginning to the end even the ending i thought was really well done like it just one of those films that like i would love to go into a deep dive discussion with one of these days because it's just got a lot of like just kind really? of intric- intricacies to it yeah i would uh, kind of like look i would like to talk about this further in depth someday yeah huh, interesting I didn't get that. Um, <laughs> I thought it was fine. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was fine, but I felt like it was pretty much what it set up to be. Oh, I, it was. I didn't feel there was any real layers to it, but I will acknowledge that the, the guy that plays the father, who is Tom, was also the main antagonist from 13 cameras and 14 cameras. Was same it actor. really? Yeah. Same Holy actor. crap, it was. Yep. Whoa. So, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I thought he was great and played a super creepy role in all the films he's been in that I've seen him in. I think he's actually a pretty decent actor. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I think it's really worth a watch. I think it's it's one of the 2020s that you should watch. At first, I was worried it was going to sorry, 2021s. I'll try to um, correct you as much as I can just to keep you get you to remember it. <laughs> sure, Scott. Fuck yourself. <laughs> um, so the block... <laughs> 
<laughs> so what was I going to say now? It, I thought it was going to be like the happening. I was really concerned at first that I like in some of the scenes, I'm like, oh my God, is this going to be the happening? <laughs> is this, is this what's happening? And it wasn't. So I was very happy about that. But I, I agree. I think the acting was really good quality. I, I really enjoyed the set design, but I don't think this movie was super deep. No, I mean, all. it's not deep. I just would like to actually like, just talk because there's stuff that I don't want to give away. That's oh, so you want to have a spoiler discussion of it? Yes. I, like, okay. I don't think it's like just okay. deep and there's layers to it or anything, but yeah. I would just like to talk okay. more in depth with it. Like, I can't wait to hear Exploding Heads uh, talk about this one. Okay, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. it would be great to hear uh, Dave and Christian talk about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dave, did you, I know you're going to discuss it, so you don't need to give too much away, but is there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it. It came to a point where, you know, you're guessing about what's going on here exactly. At first, I thought this was going to be something like The Bay, and then I thought maybe this is going to be something like what was that movie from uh that i really liked um um boathouse mm. from last year oh yeah I, I, that's Beach where house. i thought it was going Beach Beach house. House. Yes. thank you and i'm not gonna say either way where it went but th- there comes a scene in the movie where somebody goes out on a boat and some things start happening and you could piece it together to be one thing and i say to myself please please go there this is what i want this movie to turn into yes. and it did yes and it did they don't show me I, I wanted to see more of what was at play here and they didn't show me that and i wish they would have because i'm kind of a sucker for that type of antagonist but, yep. but that's okay that's fine but i enjoyed it. It, it it was a fine movie i um you know the part reminded me of scott actually when that there was that guy in the beginning is kind of the conspiracy theorist guy and yeah friend, and, and what he said reminded me of scott he said he goes these people they're actually slaves to their cat overlords <laughs> <laughs> that is that is scott oh, for sure i am a slave to my cat overlords they rule this house <laughs> i'm glad I'm just you didn't lucky say they let me stay here <laughs> does scott remind you of the guy from 14 cameras oh, god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. thank god for that <laughs> so that's like, brandon too sh- yeah. <laughs> that was Brandon's role Marion, right there. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Mike Marion too. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, Mike, that one's for you. Um, but yeah, so you guys can catch it out on Netflix. It's a it's a free watch. Like if you have Netflix, I don't think you're gonna be disappointed by spending some time with this film. I think it's no. totally worth it. Nope. Yep. And uh yeah, the next one is you, Heather. I have not seen oh, this. Oh, you haven't yet. seen this? Oh well, hair flip here. Hair flip here. <laughs> uh so this is called The Dead of Night. It's very much a modern day Western. It's a 90 minute runtime. It has Matthew Lawrence in it, which totally was the reason why I watched it because I haven't seen him in anything in a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> like really, really long time. Um, he was really good. And the and it was a very entertaining story. So oh. basically, um, it's about a family that's being terrorized by killers. It is a little bit of a of a kind of a murder mystery it's a very complicated plot so you really need to be focused on watching it because this isn't something you can have on in the background walk away from and come back to there's a lot of multiple characters in it uh there's a lot of heavy dialogue the filming is done very well their nighttime filming was done really well too because sometimes nighttime filming's hit or miss sometimes they they film it and they don't have enough light so you can't really get the full impact and this movie did find a nice little balance for it as i said it is kind of based in a western and it is it is a it is a deeper watch you are kind of following a saga of murders that are happening in a community and why so 90 minutes it's available to rent on google voodoo microsoft office store and youtube i would say a 299 399 rental is fair if i've described something that sounds like it would be something for you have you seen this one dave no i'm kind of surprised because this is one i took a look at and said i was going to skip uh, based on the cover and based on yeah just based on what i saw that this looks very skippable to me the acting's good it's a solidly well acted film i'll I'll definitely give it that but it is a slower film and it definitely feels the full 90 minutes i think dave you could go either way on this like it's 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 not like i wouldn't say to you oh man better watch it because it's going to be in your top 20 of the year but it might be a fascinating enough story for you that you would enjoy it cool 
All right. I remember so, you said that I might like it too. Just yeah, of the I know. Settings. Well, you really like westerns, and you like that kind of yeah. setting, and it's a modern day western, Ooh. right? So I think that you would enjoy it. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be a big hitter for people, but it's it's a decent enough watch. I think it's worth a rental if what we've described, you know, heavy dialogue, a lot of characters, uh, a murder mystery is kind of your thing. Then I think you'll enjoy this. Nice. Ooh. And the next one, uh, well, actually, Dave is a. Uh, when is your movie coming up? My you... last, no, I, I've got my the, I, I, from what I'm seeing here. This is the fourth movie. This is the least favorite of my view. Oh, all right. Oh. Okay, so this one is uh, you two then, because I have not watched this yet. Oh, okay. Well, Dave, I'll let you talk a little bit about your thoughts about the funeral home first. Okay, you know this was the the first one I watched, and my memory is going to be a little bit hazy because not a whole lot stood out about it for me. It was interesting because of the the family dynamic, the the drama. Everybody had to deal with like something because it, 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 it's just a a man and his wife and their their daughter. Although he's the he's the uh, the stepfather, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if they just moved into this house. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. And I'm not a hundred percent sure if he has always been. He's always lived there, guy. and he and he inherited the funeral home from his family, but that okay. was hard to figure out. I had to go back and read to figure that okay. out. <laughs> All right, so it wasn't so it's not clear me. cut. Okay. All right. This is Spanish, right? There. It Spanish is. Yeah, it's from Argentina. Right. Okay. And th- what I liked about it was the dynamic and what's going on there. They each have something to deal with. The daughter, the daughter's real father passed away, you know, shortly before all this has happened. But the way she feels about w- the man is different than the way her mother feels about the man. Apparently, the father abused the mother. But from what I gather here, he did not abuse the daughter and she holds him in high regard. Mm-hmm. The, maybe he abused her because sometimes that still happens. Sometimes because some, someone could be abused as a child and still hold the parent in high regard. Absolutely. But they don't really, they don't touch upon that. The way I get it, she sees him one way, her mother sees him another, and the guy is kind of dealing, having to deal with them too, but also having to deal with the ghost literally and figuratively in his life about being in that house and being and having to deal with his father who's passed on and his relationship with him. So we have a lot going on there, but I just think ultimately it's a little bit more generic than I'd like it to be. Mm. It's well-made, but I guess those, you know, those are my, that's my thoughts on, on as a whole. Yeah. It's a very religious focused movie. I would say it picks up at the end, probably the last 20, yeah. 25 minutes are the best part of this film. Um, it's an uncorked film so uncorked picked this up which I'm impressed of because this is something that uncorked can add to their <laughs> their collection that compared to other uncorked films quite good uh, sure. oh, yeah. the acting's decent but it does drag I would say that first into second act is kind of it kind of drags out a little bit. You get a lot of character development um, with the family dynamics of what's going on in the first little bit. Maybe not necessary. It uh, It's an 86-minute runtime. Feels like an 86-minute runtime. It is available to rent on Google, Vudu, Microsoft Store, and YouTube. I would say uh, if you really enjoy religious-centric f- films, uh, maybe you dig the whole idea of a funeral home haunting a two ninety nine rental is probably fair. Three ninety nine. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, it's worth checking out. It's definitely worth checking out. Again, like if I'm going by number rating, it's a six point five. So it's not like I okay. think it's a bad movie. It just yeah. wouldn't make my recommends, but my seven or uh, or in ten or, or yeah. higher. But it's like I'm going to ask you a question. Maybe I missed out on something here, but I thought they were going somewhere cool, and either I missed it or they just didn't acknowledge it. They had those three keep showing up, those three caskets, those three. Yep. Okay. And then at one time, the wife makes a comment to the husband about you dealing with some of the people in your past, almost almost like referencing that these are his exes, possibly, or something like that. That's the gist I got from the yeah. conversation. But then I don't think that they it turned into anything. Is it me or did, did I just blink and miss something? No, I think they, they actually... were supposed to be the exes of like, not his romantic exes, his past of like 
wrongdoings because his family had this funeral home they've had demons in this funeral home their entire life and i think it was connected to that and i wonder if this was just a a film that we didn't fully get because we're not from argentina and we're not part of that cultural group and we didn't get the whole superstition that came with it or if it was just really not written communicated well i feel like a lot Mm -hmm. of stuff wasn't overly communicated well and my impression was that it was just demons that were kind of recycling through uh, but you could be right, Dave. That's the problem. We're not sure. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> right? Like that's We're the problem. Sure. Right. right? So you know, it, that's our that's our thoughts on it. Um, you know, rent it if you want. I I don't think you'll hate it. I don't think most people no. would hate it. But it's it's not one of the higher you know must watches of the year, unless of course you really dig religious films. Like if that's your go to, then yes, you'll probably like this. Like if you enjoy religious films a lot, because there is a religious piece in there, and there is like a haunting and all that other stuff so yeah because i remember you mark know? nato talked highly about this one yeah so mark nato loves sense. religious films so yeah like that's his that's yeah, his that's, that's his, yeah that's his uh that's his bread and butter right there yeah he loves right. that stuff <laughs> he loves it, i like so. it i like them too but i mean like this actually kind of fits into our our main event because doesn't yeah. the woman comes to the house oh it 100 percent does dave <laughs> oh nice yeah. Yeah. damn yeah. i should have watched this then Shit. yeah there is a little of that going on and there, there is absolutely it's... And I honestly, that's the point I enjoyed, part I enjoyed the most yeah. is when that all happened personally. Yep. You know, that's when I kind of got more into it and I found that it picked up for me. Yeah, that, that was good in the end. And the, the climax was interesting yeah. for sure. But yeah. I, I agree. The way you sum it up, I, I'm with you. It's You won't hate it. You, you, no. might, you might love it. You'll probably like it. And But it's just a movie for, for us, I think, that we saw it, we liked it, it was okay. We don't regret our time with it. Moving on. Yeah, know? exactly, right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. All right, yeah. Scotty. Well, I was going to say, since you watched this one, how about you take this one and I take the last one since I've only seen that one? You know, Scott, it's not fair that I have to do all the heavy listing here. Well, I mean, you are, you, I mean, you are the Friday Nightmares. (laughs) Oh yeah, that's right. For sure. Uh, So the the last movie I'll be talking about today is The Parish. Uh, So this was originally came, was filmed or released or whatever in 2019, but it just got available now in 2021. Um, Mm. It's, it's not bad. It's it's a decent enough little film. I think for the budget that it worked with, it does a pretty good job. It's basically about a family that's forced to relocate and there's some hauntings. And also could fit into our theme yeah. as of today as well. And for a movie that uses hauntings, the ghosts were done in a way that was very good for a low budget film. Yep. It wasn't Agreed. cheesy. It wasn't stupid. They looked at what their money was and they said, okay, how can we make this look decent? Would it, um, when we look at our awards, I would put this up for low budget that used their budget well. I would consider this one at this point for that award simply because of how it did its climax. I think they put a lot of money into the climax while taking money away from other spaces that they were able to take money away from. The acting was decent enough. These were people that were obviously polishing off their acting chops. Um, probably will improve as they continue to go on. Yep. And there is one recognizable person in it, which is uh, Bill Oberst Jr. as yes. the uh, as the uh, the priest. Yes, and then it's available for rent on YouTube, Vudu, uh, Google Play, and Microsoft Office Store. I would say a one ninety nine rental is is worth your time. Yeah, I was gonna say and um. This is another uncorked film, and yeah, I yeah, it put, is, yeah. Um, so yeah, like we got, we did two, we have two uncorked films on this list today, which is, uh, you know, shocking because we haven't had too many yet this year. No, we haven't. And, uh, like, or we've just avoided some of the really bad ones. That yes, we have. <laughs> um, but uh, I would definitely, like you were saying, for like ward style, like I had, I enjoyed my time with this one, and this would probably be in my like favorite of the uncorked ones that i've seen so far yeah um like but yeah they use their budget their budget wisely and like yeah it was a little more of a religious aspect and you know i'm not a big like person with when it comes to religious horror because i feel it can be just overdone but this one i felt did a did it different enough to where i really like was intrigued and enjoyed my time with it like this is yeah i would say a 199 rental is totally worth it and we're assuming you haven't seen this, Dave, right? No, I, you know, I was looking at it, I was considering it, and then uh, the release date was a little too late for me because I was watching our, our main event movies during the last couple of days. And I think this one just came out like two or three days ago. So yeah. I wasn't able to. I, it was on the horizon. I was like, maybe I'll watch this. And then I, you know, just couldn't get to it. 
Yeah, I think uh, I would be curious to hear your thoughts on it because I think you would uh, least appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, I think this is someone who, you know, if this is a filmmaker yet again, we always talk about this. If you're looking at making a movie one day and you want to look at low budget films what done well, done well, this is an example. You know, yes. this and the special last year were two very good examples of how you can work with not a lot of budget, but still put your money where it counts to make a relatively entertaining film. Yep, agreed. Cool. Um, I'm always interested in that because you see so many movies that have low budgets and sometimes you watch a movie and, and you hear the budget and you're like, wow, this looks like it was made for 10 times the budget. Yeah. And you watch other movies made with a similar budget. You're like, yeah, this looks like it was made for half the budget. What's going on? Exactly. Right. Right? It's all about yeah. where you invest your money and how you invest it. I don't know if you've seen the special from last year, Dave, but that movie, you would like that movie. If there's a movie to watch from 2020, if you didn't get a chance to check that out, I think you will enjoy even just the concept of it. I think you'll get a kick out of, but the special, the practical effects in it are pretty fucking good. Like, so, and your daughter might dig it. It is um, of a sexual nature. So maybe watch it first before Uh your daughter sees it. Like, I don't know what you're comfortable with showing your daughter um because it is a highly sexual film but uh it, the, for practical effects i think she would dig it and so would you yeah right like it, i don't know why why didn't i see this movie hmm. yeah i was say like it was one that like i don't think many people had talked about either like we just kind of stumbled across it and yeah it was really impressive especially for low budget cool. um right, i'm gonna put it on the list okay Thanks. yeah definitely rick i would love to hear your thoughts on that one as well because yeah that one is definitely a very interesting movie Uh, So yeah, I'll jump on to the final 2021 film of this evening, and that is Sacrilege. Uh, The synopsis is, four lifelong friends head to a remote lodge for a weekend of fun. What begins as an idyllic retreat quickly descends into a fight for their lives when a local pagan cult offer them up to their goddesses as a sacrifice for the solstice. Um, This one, like I've seen the trailer, I'm going, okay, I'll give this a watch. It looks like, you know, least uh, quality acting. Um, you know, and I love the whole like going to a cottage and something crazy happens type situations. Um, however, yeah, the characters were just kind of eh, like I didn't really care for them one way or the other for the most part. And they make just some dumb decisions on, hey, let's go to a pagan cult and or a pagan festival and party. That sounds like a great idea. And it, it, it's like I'm like, I don't think I would know anybody that would just say that. So like it's. <laughs> The way they get set up with the situation is not that good. If there are spoilers in here, sorry. I just don't think this is worth anybody's time. But, like, it was okay for what it was. and But, like, it did have some iffy CGI that for some of the situations that just looked really bad and hokey. Um, But, yeah, all in all, this one was just kind of like, well, the trailer fooled me. Shame on me for getting sucked into it but at the same time like i didn't hate my time with it it was just kind of there like i would give this 5.5 out of 10 like like a little above average but just the story itself is kind of what just wasn't there for me so it's available on amazon google voodoo uh youtube and microsoft store all for rent uh would you say don't rent it um I would say dollar ninety nine rental, maybe if this seems like something up your alley. I would say watch the trailer, read the synopsis, and if you hear what I'm talking about and still say, you know, this sounds like something I'll at least want to give a watch, a dollar ninety nine rental is wise. If not, don't bother. If not, don't waste your time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming you haven't seen this Dave, right? No, I you know, I saw it listed somewhere and I looked it up and pondered it for a moment, but I saw a lot of bad ratings, so I just kinda Left it up to the pros to, to venture into it. You know, <laughs> you, know, you let the, this is what you do, Dave. You let other you people do. do the dirty work and mm-hmm. then you watch the good shit. It's true. Right? However, yeah. however, well, hold on now. The, 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 the I did bring three movies here that nobody watched. You did a great right? job. You yeah, actually, okay. like, we're wondering if you would like to replace Scott. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. Scott's like, and no I'm chance. wondering if you want to replace Heather. <laughs> no. No, I need you guys because there is some truth to what you said. There is some truth. To, I, I do rely on certain people to do this, but I also have my own methods. But the thing yep. is, it, you guys help, as does Mark Nato, as do a few other podcasts that I listen to because that you guys will watch. 
everything that comes out. So I will take that, but, and I will use that, but all, I also have, you know, like before people were doing this, I've been doing this for years. I still had my, my own methods that, that are like, I always say they're like 90 something percentile. I'm tried and true with it. So I got to keep riding. You know? That's a pretty good percentile. Yeah. Honestly, that's a really good percentile. So um, well, we're going to, we're going to move into our older watches. I am so excited for one of them that Dave brought to the table. Um, I have a feeling we get to that one because Dave and I a long time ago had a conversation about this film when I was first trying to befriend him and be cool and uh, we have similar Ooh. views so I'm excited for this but I'll I'll quickly go through mine uh the stuff 1985 <laughs> I yes. watched on- speaking of movies about consumerism <laughs> yeah and you know the stuff reminded me what is that like marshmallow Fluff? Stuff that you can buy at a store. That's yeah, it's like job. marshmallow fluff, I think. Fluff. Is that what yeah. it's called, fluff? Oh, my God. you never God. had a fluffer nutter sandwich before? Well, I've been a fluffer, but I've never <laughs> had a fluffer. <laughs> I've never had a fluffer nutter sandwich. You that have to. Interesting. Dude, wait, Heather, wait. They have fluff in Canada, right? They yes, have- they do. I just, have, okay. I just don't buy it because it looks gross. <laughs> but check it. No, 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 no. It's marshmallow. How can a marshmallow be gross? Come on, listen to me. Go to right. the store, buy two slices of bread, buy some fluff, buy some peanut butter. Sit down one night, wait till you have like a little buzz on because I know you like to drink a little bit now. Oh, and I also then. like to smoke too, Dave. Oh, then it's, oh my, it's heavenly <laughs> if you smoke. It, heavenly. It. <laughs> You are gonna love it. You put fluff on one part on one bread. You put peanut butter on the other bread. You know, stamp them together. Yep. And have yourself a fluffer nutter. I'm telling you, it might be <laughs> life changing. It might change my life. It will be like the stuff, and I'll just buy, you know, <laughs> containers and containers of it. I honestly enjoyed this movie. I actually really like the main character, uh, the main and protagonist. I thought he was really funny. And I love the random kid that runs away from his parents' house because <laughs> they become so addicted. <laughs> they become so addicted to the stuff. I thought that, and I watched it on Tubi. It it was a fun 1985 movie. Like it's a fun little fluffy film. It's obviously a little more of a comedy than it is of a horror. Like there's some scary parts, you know, quote unquote scary scary parts in it. I think this would be a great movie to introduce kids to at a certain age like i think yeah. it's you know fairly family friendly um yeah i enjoyed it it was good times and it's got yeah. a wonderful side character by the name of chocolate chip charlie yeah yes. and like <laughs> there was some like and there was some odd dialogue and i'm like oh man you could not get away with that now no. <laughs> like 1985 but you know what it was made in 1985 and it is what it is and it's available on tubi by the way if anyone's looking to watch it for free you can watch it on tubi and Blood Beach from 1980. So I had seen what I believe is the remake, but they don't quote it as the remake, which was The Sands, yes. uh, which is about a creature that lives in the sands. And Blood Beach was about that too. And John Saxon is in this as a, as a police or as a, um, what is he? The head of the police department. Cause like he's that's always. a role he always plays. Yeah. Right. And yeah. damn, he was great. Like it was a fun film. And the guy from Rocky that played Polly was in it. Yep. Which he says some funny yeah. shit. Yeah. Uh, great movie. Great 1980 movie. I'm sad I missed it. I'm glad I got a chance to watch it now. I thought it was a really good kind of creature feature. I thought the special effects for 1980 were decent. <laughs> the uh, creature design was a bit silly when yeah, I got revealed. Yeah, but it's 1980, real, but, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, you know, I, I understand that there were films that did that better, but this was just jumping on to, like, the craze of Jaws and all that oh, yeah. shit, right? Alligator, everything else. So yeah. I wish um, this had a better quality film, like, uh, release, because yes. it yes. does look like a straight from VHS rip. Oh, it totally it's... does, right? Don't say VHS. It's a trigger word. Christian might be listening. <laughs> um, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Levi, a three. He's going to start <laughs> smashing just about tapes that. everywhere. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Christian. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed both of these. It was nice to check out some hidden gems from the 80s that I had uh, that I had missed. So that was good times. Yeah, I was like, because I did watch Blood Beach uh, yesterday, because after you had watched it and told me about it, I was like, I'll check it out. And yeah, I was for like a very low budget uh, 80s film. I, I, I had fun with this one. Like, like you I set was... your expectations walking into yeah. these two films, right? No one's going to walk into the stuff and go, oh man, going to be like Oscar worthy, super deep, like conversations. Like, yeah, it's about consumerism and 
overconsumption, environmental stuff. Like, but it's it's done in a comedy like way. And Blood Beach is just a beach that you know fucks up people. And I I dig that concept. Yeah. I thought that was that was cool. And the little interviews that they threw in with people at the beach and how like flighty they were. And yep. man, it just made me want to go party at a beach though. Like I still just want to like drink and party all the time. Yeah, Heather, yeah. you are the party animal. I really am. I, that's my best. Yeah, that's what I want to do, Dave. It's like real talk. Me too. Me yeah, too. see, Dave gets me. Don't worry, Dave. One day the borders were open and we'll be able to hang out in Buffalo or I'm Niagara down. Falls. Either Anywhere. one. Right um, on. But yeah, so I guess we'll move into Dave's because Dave's are next. Okay. Now this first one I watched because I I do this thing now. Thanks to Brandon, I'm gonna give him props because I I do this thing called Fringe February now. January is my month where I watch non horror movies or sometimes catch up on old horror movies that I don't like to uh, that you know that I haven't had a chance to watch or whatever that I haven't seen before. So that's what I do in January now because there's been so many fringe movies, fringe horror the last two three years. And I, some of them I skipped. I decided to watch them in, in February. So a certain title spilled over into Fringe February. Now, this was a movie that I was actually looking forward to. It's a regular horror movie. So it's not even a fringe flick. But I watched this particular movie from 2020. And the reason I didn't watch it is because other people spoiled it for me. And they compared it to this movie, which I actually watched. So what I did was my wife and myself and my daughter, we sat down and we watched this 2020 movie. And then I had a little discussion after. And then I said, okay, now, and my wife knows about the village, but my daughter does not. I think you guys, have, you, you have to see the village now. Okay. So we sat down and we watched ourselves M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, 2004. Now going into this, I'm going to tell everybody that I've said for years that this is my favorite Shyamalan movie. I think it gets a lot of hate. So the reason I thought I'd watch it or bring it up here now is because maybe just maybe if there's anybody out there who hasn't seen it since the first time they've seen it and anything i say is going to let them is going to put it in their head to watch it again please do if you've only seen this movie once and you were pissed off at the reveal or you were expecting a regular horror movie and didn't get that cast all that aside second view is very important you know what happens now now just go in and take the movie for what it is you know what it is now but the thing the reason I, I i encourage people to watch this movie is i think it's a great movie i think it's very well made i think the acting is great the performances i think just as a film it's his it's his best made film Shyamalan. i, I think that what happens the reveals that happen later it all makes sense. There's there's commentary here. There's things going on between the characters that are that are so deep. It's it's actually a great love story. There's certain scenes in this movie that I don't think anybody paid attention to the first time they saw it. And to go back now and take it and see that there's so much going on here beneath the surface. It's it's a I, I know I, I sound like I'm blowing it, but I really do think it's that good a film. I think it's an excellent movie. And I think everybody who's only seen it once and blew it off should give it one more chance and just take it as a movie. Now, Heather, I hope that you're talking about you and I have, because it couldn't be the other one because the other one was the first time watch for me. So it has to be this. I hope you're going to come It absolutely is. Say, and I agree with you 100%. Oh, I think wonderful. it's one of the best movies that um, M. Night Shyamalan made. And when I saw this, I was 21 when it came out. Um, and I think I rented it. I can't remember. Yeah, I think I rented it. And I would have given it a standing ovation. I thought the twist was phenomenal. I thought the message was great. I thought it was really unique at the time. And I think, unfortunately, it was too early. I think if this came out now, people would rave. They would be like, what a great film. So different. But I think in 2004, it was just not what people were expecting. It was and the they felt it was a letdown where I felt that ending was or the twist or whatever you want to call it was beyond brilliant. I just, so. I think it was the marketing, Heather. That's what yeah. I think was the problem that people were expecting yeah. a straight up horror movie and they yeah. got something else. It's okay. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm right there with you guys. Like I, I really do enjoy this film. Like um, when, cause I've heard people complain about the twist and everything and I'm going, I watched it. And I went that twist completely caught me by surprise and bravo. Like I, you didn't I see that coming she, yeah. until she walks on the highway and we're going to spoil it because it's the village from 2004. If you have not seen the village from 2004, like I don't know what rock you're living under. Um, it's, it's shocking. Like it's shocking. Yeah. And, and how they went so, they tried so hard to create a society to avoid murder and jealousy and revenge. And it found them anyway, because of human nature. Yep. 
Right. And I, I agree, Dave. I think things went down for Emelon and Night Shyamalan from here. The only one yeah. I kind of also enjoy is Split. Yes. Um, oh, but and, yeah. um, you know what? The found footage the visit. one? The, oh, visit. The, 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 um, the one to the grandmother's house, the visit? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I like that yeah. one too. Um, I never saw the one in the pool. Yeah, Lady, Lady in the Water. The water. Yeah, I never bothered um, that one. So, you know, I, I think he... I think he has a very unique way of looking at films, but I agree. A lot of people shit on this movie and it's a shame. And I, yeah. I a hundred percent agree. Dave, people should do a rewatch. It's coming up to this movie being almost 20 years old, which is crazy. Right. And I think mm-hmm. it really was released before it's time. I think there's always films out there that get released and then other films will, you know, jump onto that concept. And then all of a sudden it's a popular concept to do and yep. people rave about it. Right. So yeah. Thanks for bringing it up today. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. I, I'm glad you guys like it. And like I said, I hope I change one person's mind. Just go back and, wa- and watch it now with the knowledge and, and maybe you'll preach. Cause I think there's so much more. There is actually a podcast. Um, Jay from uh, a movie podcast weekly with, with, with Watson and, and Shani dreadful. Yes. Uh, he has a, another. He has a, a side cast called "Considering the Cinema," and he was originally on horror movie podcast, um, Jay of the Dead. In case you don't know who that is, but he he has a, a solo cast called "Considering the Cinema." Well, The Village is his all time favorite movie, and he put out a podcast. It was like almost a three hour podcast, and he brought in guests and uh, a couple couple different ones and, and broke things down and to hear him talk about it he really he brought up a few points that even i didn't think about watching at this time and nice. it, it made me appreciate it even more it's really Absolutely. it's a great love story there is yep. so much going on here and there are so many little scenes that you just didn't pick up on the first time yep. and for me the twist it, it's almost inconsequential. I like it, but it's like most of my enjoyment for the movie has nothing to do with the reveal at all. It's just everything else, honestly. Yeah, that, that, that's how good I think it is. I do appreciate what, what gets revealed and everything else and yep. how you said they, they tried to escape it and look what happened yep. and, you know, and, and can you really run away from it and everything that goes on there. But I just think it's a damn fine film is what it comes down to. I think it's Absolutely. just, it, it, yep, it's had a agree. bad rap for too long. I so. agree with you, Dave, hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. All right. And the other one, complete opposite. This is nothing but fun. And <laughs> the movie I've owned for a little while and have not watched it. And I had to watch it for, for two reasons, because it's a blind spot for me for uh, a movie that stars the great uh, Miss Linnea Quigley from the yeah. 80s, who I, I mean, from now too, but I, I say from the 80s, because for me, growing up in that time period, being born in 72 and getting into horror in 82 and watching everything, she was just as big a part of the scene for me and my friends as was Tom Savini, as was Friday the 13th, as was different things going on there. Anything that was going on with Linnea, we wanted to know. We loved her. She was beautiful. She was fun. She was like a rock star to, to my friends and I. So anything straight horror that, that she was in, we saw. And I, I don't know why I never watched this movie. I don't know. Maybe it was marketed a different way. More as a straight up comedy. And it is. It is comedy. But I mean, it still was a horror thing. But I just had to watch it because it was a Friday night. I said, I'll have a little fun. I'm going to finally watch this movie. And what's cool about this is that we get to see Linnea in a different type of role. She yes. actually, yeah, she plays a badass and for the first time that i could think she is not sexualized what and when i'm saying sexualized it sounds like it, it, it's i'm saying something that's bad i don't mean it that she doesn't use her sexuality whatsoever in this film doesn't even show any part of her skin it has nothing to do with her presentation she just is a badass character who's up to something but then we you know she has a character arc she does have heart you know and everything else and you do love the character but it's just a different type of uh, of portrayal for her. So I'm really glad I watch it. It's fun. It's about these people. They uh, there's a sorority. They have some new pledges coming in. So we have three girls that are running the show, and they're, they're pledging uh, a couple girls. And then they have these two peep guys that are coming around that are peeping in the windows to see what's going on. They're having this little in initiation, and they get busted. So as part of the initiation, these girls have to go to this empty bowling alley and, I don't know, s- steal a trophy. It's a college prank thing. So they go in there and they go to steal the trophy. They drop the trophy. Uh, the, the boys end up having to go with them. It's their punishment for being, uh, you know, peepers and uh, peeping toms. So they go in there and the other girls are going to play jokes on them, the ones that are running it. And when they drop this one trophy that they're supposed to get, it's like an Aladdin and the magic lamp thing. And they rub it. And this thing comes out and it's something called an imp and it's this rubbery creature thing, which is a little bit goofy, but it still does the, it's like the, 
the old it's not gift of the magi um the the hand what is that the monkey's paw it's one of oh, those monkey's paw, like, yeah. oh yeah nice, you nice if you make a wish okay it's gonna happen but eventually the wish is gonna come back to haunt you a certain way and, and this this imp gives everybody wishes hell breaks loose we see something uh linnea's in there strictly because she just happened to be breaking in this bowling alley to rob it because she's this criminal and she's all by herself she's this badass chick going in there to freaking to, to rip off these cash registers or vending machines and be on her way and she gets sucked into the the situation and it's just a fun movie and if you're into the 80s and, and those type of movies it's it's definitely worth checking out so that's yeah. awesome thanks for bringing it dave yeah i watched um, this uh last year uh for a first time watch and yeah it was just so silly and so 80s but it was just one of those where it's just like turn your brain off and enjoy because the imp is hilarious and like the guy that voices him is just like the things he <laughs> says just cracks me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this oh, I, I I found it just a like fun cheesy eighties film just to enjoy. It was definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it. That's yeah, I think it's awesome. on Shutter too. I think yes, it's on yes, Shutter. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. that's where yeah. I watched it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah have you yeah. seen it, Heather, or no? No, but I'm totally gonna check this shit out. You've sold me. Yeah, it's, it's a seeker. Yeah. You would uh, you would love it because I, I was thinking I'm like, okay, sorority babes, okay, this could be lots of nudity and like just kind of like you know, oh, which silly, is like that you is, definitely but... don't like Scott. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but I know <laughs> oh, titties. <laughs> Dude, gross. <laughs> Naked women, ew. Ew. <laughs> and no. you know, there it's a very attractive cast too. I mean Linnea isn't her regular self, but the other it's, it's like Brink Stevens is in there nice. and uh Oh, what's her name? There's, there's all kinds of, uh, geez, let me see, because I know there's some other names, um, girls that, you know, women that were in these roles at the time. Yeah, Brink Stevens, of course, Michelle Bauer, that's the other one, uh, Carla B. The, you know, these people, uh, George Buck Flower has this, yep. has this strange part in there, which, <laughs> you know, he's funny as always, he, but he, uh, they probably had him for like a day or two, and, you know, but it's fun. And again, like I said, I, I'm a, I'm a Linnea Quigley completist. I, I want to see them all because, like I said, I grew up with her and, I watched the In Search of Darkness part two. That, that I got a screener for it. It's going to be released again. This is the whole thing with it. But you guys saw that one, right? Yeah, the we saw that one. Yep. It's great. Well, great part great. two. Have you seen the second one yet? Or yeah. No? Yes. Yeah, it's okay. long. But man, it's it the same thing. Yeah. So, but, but she was all over it and she wasn't in the first one. No. So I started, I'm like, I'm so glad they included her in this. Thing. I even sent her a message on Facebook because, you know, I'm friends with her. And I remember I was so excited. She sent me a front request one day and I said, look, oh, at it. And I, 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 I took a freaking screen cap of it and I sent it to my friend. I go, look at this. I, I so fanboyed. I go, look who I'm talking to and look who just sent me a front request on Facebook. It was like the most exciting thing between that and the time Tom Savini liked something I said on, tw- on Twitter. Those are like my, my big fanboy moments. Well, of they're everything. pretty awesome, Dave, in all fairness. Oh. That's, that's some pretty yeah. hardcore bag- bragging rights for sure. I was yeah. so happy. So I sent her a message <laughs> telling her, I said, I just finished watching In Search of Darkness 2. I'm so glad you were included. It made the experience even better because to have you there and you were such a big part of the age growing up. And she's like, she, anytime I talk to her, she responds back. She's a real sweetheart. So that's amazing. That's nice to hear. Yeah. 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 It really is. So that's anyway, awesome, Dave. That's so cool. Babes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, Scotty, take us, oh. take us home with your two. All right. Well, this first one I watched because. Heather did a guest spot on the Cemetery Gates podcast, and this film was one of the films that she had to review, and Xander Kane on the show pretty much said, I have to watch this and give it a review, because he wanted to know my thoughts, and Heather relayed the message to me. So, Xander, here you go. I am talking about blood-sucking pharaohs in Pittsburgh from 1991. Um, the only place I was able to find this is on YouTube. Uh, for right now the finest that youtube has to offer (laughs) you know me i always resort to youtube when i can um but this is about two detectives that are trying to solve a case about this killer that is basically doing like egyptian style ritualistic killings and when watching this i'm going what the fuck am i watching (laughs) This is so ridiculous. Like, it's blatant comedy. Like, it's absolutely silly and over the top and ridiculous. Um, But I enjoyed the characters in this quite a bit, especially the one detective's wife who is, like, just always, like, saying, you think she's hotter than me, don't you? And he's literally talking about a woman that got her brain scooped out at this investigation. And she's like, she's hotter than me. Isn't that what you're saying? He's like, she just had her brain scooped out. No, that's not what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, but that just like the the story itself was just so over the top and ridiculous. Like this is definitely one of those films I would not recommend to everybody. But like if you are into this, just like watching movies that are just like, what the fuck? This is so bizarre. And you enjoy like low budget practical effects and like just cheesy in your face, corny acting. Because they they know this movie is not serious and they don't take it seriously. No, they definitely do not take themselves seriously. Yeah, and I have to say, it's not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but I had a fun time with this one. It was (laughs) so ridiculous. Uh, I would uh, would recommend this to specific people for sure to watch. So yeah, Xander, thank you for suggesting this. And honestly, when I first watched it, I was like, "Eh, you know, I'm not too sure how I'm feeling about this. Then I listened to you guys talk about it on the podcast and it kind of made me think about it a little more and go, you know, yeah, I I like this a little more than I was giving it credit for at first. (laughs) Like you guys kind of swayed me on it. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's cheese cheese. Like it's up there. Um, yeah, those yep. boys, man, they always get me to watch the weirdest shit. Yes, they do. <laughs> and I have to say, you also brought a, a movie that fit perfectly with what they were watching. So <laughs> yeah, I tried. Yeah, and I watched that one too, but I won't talk about that one this time. Maybe next episode I'll bring that one up. Um, but the next movie we're gonna ta- I'm gonna talk about is one that's actually a sequel to something that's in our main topic because I've never seen any of the sequels to it, and that is Poltergeist Two, 1986. Now, I'll, you know, I've obviously Poltergeist 1 is a classic, and I've heard there is definitely like some sort of a cult following when it comes to part two because of Reverend Kane, um, which honestly, to me, that was the highlight of this movie was Kane himself because he's just very creepy and just like unsettling when he's on screen. But the rest of the movie just eh, it didn't work for me. It didn't have the charm that the first one had. And it didn't have the like dread that the first one had as well. But like the only thing that I this movie had going for it, honestly, was just Reverend Kane. Like, cause it I mean it, I will say they brought the entire cast back, which is cool. So everybody is playing their roles back from the, the same family. Um, and like it literally ties into what happened in the first film and it just kind of follows them. But yeah, it just it didn't land that uh that well for me. Just came pretty much. So like it was yeah, it was okay. I'm glad I watched it. I'll eventually get to part three just because I've never seen it as well. Just to kind of I'm a completionist, so once I start a trilogy or a franchise, I'll eventually get to the point where I finish them all off. But, awesome, well, awesome. Keep awesome. your expectations low for part three. If you thought part two was just decent, definitely keep your expectations low for three. I'll, I'll tell yeah, you that's <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people really like part two, and I do like it, uh, but I do understand where you're coming from as well. But I've seen it so many times now. It's just one of those movies that I don't love, but I just watched so many times over the years. I think it used to be on cable a lot when I was a kid, and everything else, and. I have more fun with it than you do. I love everything that happens with the, uh, when he drinks the, uh, when Craig T. Nelson drinks the tequila and the worms yes. inside and the thing with the kid in the braces and, and, and the end chase when things are, there are some things I like, but they kind of also toyed around with the, uh, with the mythology a bit when they went back to the yeah. house. But they were saying it didn't quite make sense. So I get what you're saying. Yeah, but it was just like, I'm glad I watched it, but yeah, it was just, it's not something I could see myself revisiting anytime soon. Honestly, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Let's move into what we've been listening to. Um, and Dave, I know you you listen to a bunch of podcasts. We'll leave the best for last. And <laughs> you can think of one that you just want to give a shout out to. Uh, mm-hmm. So the one I'm going to give a shout out to is one of our, our Legion friends, which is uh, the BD Clinic. First of all, I absolutely love the promo for this. I yes. think the voice, I think it's Vanessa. Yep. And she's super sexy. Let's just put it this way. Like her voice is like smooth caramel to your ears <laughs> it is just amazing uh her and darren dissect movies they have the waiting room which is where they go over different books and other things that they've been reading and they dissect a movie and one of the episodes that i really enjoyed was their uh their episode they did around the christmas season and they did clue and they had court psyops and another gentleman on there and i can't remember his name right now Um, That was a guest that's also another podcaster. And it was just a really fun discussion about Clue. Because I think Clue's actually a really good movie. And I'm surprised it's never been remade. Um, Maybe They're trying, actually. Are they trying? Because I guess the board game doesn't have the same popularity maybe now that it did back in the 80s. But, man, that was a great film. And Tim Curry in it. And and, um, 
is it Jason Lloyd? Not Jason Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, Jason Lloyd. Jason Lloyd. <laughs> Jason Lloyd. <laughs> what is um? What is his name? Lloyd. Oh, Christopher, oh, Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. Yes. Yeah. Christopher Lloyd. Not Jason Lloyd. That's what he's doing now. He's in movies. He's yes. doing a part <laughs> Um. But yeah, I, I, anyway, they did a great job of discussing that. I, I strongly recommend if you want to listen to a man and a woman, go back and forth and have a very uh, deep discussion. Uh, Vanessa and Darren are your people for that. They're also uh, very political. They do like to talk about politics quite a bit. So you do have to kind of be into that. And you can find that on the Legion Podcast Network. And we'll include links if you would like to subscribe and check out other Legion shows. Yep, because yeah, I do enjoy the VD Clinic. It's very, uh, very entertaining show. Yeah, and they're fun. They're really fun, and they're and they're really good together. And yeah, you know, I like seeing another male female team. It's always yep. it's always fun stuff. Right, exactly. Um, so yeah, I guess I could just jump into another one of our uh, Legion podcasts uh, that I've been listening to recently, and that is uh, Bite Size Cinema. Uh, once again, I am giving some love to good old R.J. McCready, who did the that I talked about on the Mystery Vault podcast last episode. Uh, but yeah, this is like his main flagship show that he does, um, where he reviews a single movie and will pretty much go into details about how that was done, how the, like the filmmaking and all this stuff. And then he will go through kind of a uh, shortened version of scene by scene review of the movie. Uh, this last episode I listened to was the most recent one, which was uh, 28 Days Later, and he ended up just kind of going through that uh, scene by scene, which actually listening to that like listening to that show really made me want to go back and rewatch that movie because it's been a very long time since I've seen it. Um, and also I need to that makes me want to watch 28 Weeks Later because I have never seen that and that'd be a good one to add to first time watches. But yeah, I'm going to be short and sweet with this because, yeah, it's just, uh, it's very easy to listen, maybe 35 minutes to an hour long, depending on what the movie is. But, you know, it's RJ McCready, so I love love hearing his voice. He's got a, that wonderful accent, got to love listening to that. And just, yeah, like, he is a very good podcaster, knows his stuff, goes into great detail about everything. So, yeah, definitely check him out on the Legion Podcast Network. Awesome. And Dave, do you have one that you want to share? Yeah, uh, there's one. There are two in particular that I always shout out when somebody asks me because no one ever seems to talk about them. And one is horror related and one is not. So I'm going to talk about the horror related one. It's a show called the Buzz to Kill Podcast. Ooh. And I never heard anybody talking about them. And they've been around for quite a bit. That They, they are 229 episodes in now. And uh, they're, they're, they're almost weekly. They almost never miss a week. They're, uh, they're actually, they're from Michigan, Scott. They're, uh, oh, cool. Really? Yeah, they're, they're two lads from um, I, uh, exactly where, well, they always refer to the one place as Bad Axe, so I guess they Oh, yes, Bad Axe is the, yeah, Bad Axe is actually a town that my, some of my family actually lives in. Okay, so they're near there. Uh, nice. And they have a, their shows, they're never too long, they're like a, a 90 minutes usually, but they're very formulaic, you know what you're going to get every time, and they, they have a lot of fun, they come on and they have a different uh, beer each time, and the beer that they drink always has something to do with the movies they're going to cover, because they'll, nice. they'll, they'll cover two movies. For example, they'll say, you know, um, I'll pick something out. Okay, episode 226, Home Sweet Home. Okay, so they're talking about, oh, <laughs> this just happens to be two movies called Sweet Home, one from 1989 and one from 2015. Now, that doesn't usually happen. It's usually two movies that are connected in some way. You know, they have a topic. And they do it. So they'll come on, they'll intro the show, they'll BS for 10, 15 minutes. They're two lifelong friends. They record in the same room, mostly since COVID, maybe not exactly all the time, but it's, you get that real, that feeling of, you know, these two buddies that have, that have known each other for so long and they come in there and they have some fun. They do a little thing called the bleed feed, which is a, a little bit of news. They talk about just for a couple minutes and then they talk about the drink and the, the beer that they're going to have and how it's going to relate to the show. And they have a toast and they have a sip and they do that. And they talk about for a few minutes, they'll talk about Blu-ray releases that are have been announced or coming out. So they maybe spend half an hour on, on a, a fun intro and then they'll talk about 45 minutes after that about the two movies and they'll just do a review and uh, they'll just have fun. But they, they're on point. They have a good sense of humor. They do good reviews. It is a show that I've said for years should get more love. I tried to get them on the uh, on Horophilia for the longest time, but Jason wasn't accepting any new shows from the outside. He was, mm. As he was starting to wind things down, 
the last couple of years, he basically said, he goes, here's what we'll do. If anybody that's on the network wants to start a new show, that's okay. The feed's already here and everything else, but I don't want to welcome anybody else from the in from the outside in at this point. So there was no option there. But it, it's really a shame that no, I, I don't hear anybody talk about them. I, I don't think their listenership is all that big. I've never listened, missed an episode. And I, I contribute a little bit sometimes uh, on their Twitter and, you know, things like that. But they really should be heard by more ears. They are called the Buzzed Kill Podcast. So check them out. Awesome. Nice. I actually Thanks, just, Dave. I just subscribed cool. to them. So I'll be giving them a listen. That's cool. Awesome. Well, you got a lot of catching up to do if you like it. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave, yeah, Scott, I get like on it. that. I, like nice. I will definitely. So we cool. will be back with Dave C and we will be breaking down our topics. So before then, just a brief message from one of our Legion podcast friends. So after these messages, we'll be right back. Cha-cha. Once there was a show called the Not So Evil Episode Sidecast. It was a long name, Batman. No one could ever remember it. They released 25 episodes of brilliant film criticism. And like that, he's gone. Now, six months later, we're back. I didn't know we were gone. We've got a brand new name, new movies to review, but the same old attitude. Foul language and obscure references? Count me in. Each episode, we pick a topic, watch four movies related to that topic, then bicker amongst ourselves to decide which film is the best. We are the theme warriors! Join Iris, Jeffrey X. Martin, Doug Tilly, and myself for Theme Theme Warriors. Warriors. Four people, four movies, one dynamite show. Catch us on iTunes, Stitcher, and the Horophilia Network of Podcasts, as well as the Legion Podcast Network. That's the Theme Warriors! Don't want to sleep no more! Who are you people? Welcome back. Our main topic today is paranormal investigators going to a haunted house. (laughs) But we chose some good movies to discuss uh, this topic with. So we will be having a little bit of discussion of different movies that have kind of jumped onto this whole paranormal investigation phenomenon that's happened. I don't even know where it came from. I feel like one day I just turned on TV and there was a billion paranormal investigator shows. (laughs) that showed up so i wanted to learn a little bit more about where this all came from so you know of course there's been some articles written so the one article that we're citing at the beginning of our topic is give us a sign of your presence paranormal investigation as a spiritual practice uh so this was written by mark a eaton and it's found in the sociology of religion volume 76 issue four in the winter of 2015 so we'll have obviously a link on there if you for some reason want to read the article. So he starts off by talking about for the past 40 years, confidence in organized religion, religions have been declining in the United States. In 1975, 68% of Americans reported having a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in the church and organized religion. But by 2012, this percentage had slipped to 44. Gee, I can't imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, church attendance has declined in the United States since the 1960s. Probably a lot of this has to do with people working Sundays and weekends as well, but yeah, that's fine. Uh, this is not to say that Americans are abandoning faith, though. Through a recent study, indicates that self-identified atheists in the United States nearly doubled, so 1.6% to 3.1% between 2007 and 2014. This percentage is consistent with seven years of data showing that only two to four percent of Americans identify as atheists, so believers in nothing. People in the United States are, I shouldn't say nothing, that not believing in spiritual power. People in the United States are not necessarily losing faith, but rather diversifying their engagement to what they perceive to be supernatural or the divine. Modern religion in Western nations is characterized by the idea of a spiritual marketplace. So much like the spiritists of the latter half of the 19th century who attempted to communicate with the departed through spiritual wrapping, uh, seances and Ouija boards, contemporary paranormal investigators are driven by desire to confirm for themselves and others that there is the existence of life beyond death, which is just religion in another tone. So the spiritual overtones of this practice have been documented by Baker and Batter, who's obviously, there's uh, writers quoting. He reported that paranormal investigations are influenced with religion and magical beliefs. 
likewise, also kind of following the same kind of tone of ghosts, extraterrestrials, Bigfoot, and uh, psychic phenomena strongly predict the belief in guardian angels. The spiritual significance of paranormal belief is not restricted to ghosts and haunting. Um, there's also a belief in UFOs as well as extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial. Thank you. Are often influenced with spirituality. Too many words and I'm getting all tongue tied. <laughs> Paran- I'm just, you know, really overwhelmed about all the spirits and they're talking to me. Paranormal- yes, you're speaking in tongues now. That's right. <laughs> Paranormal teams usually include a combination of members who identify themselves as scientific. So they're reliant upon technology to monitor the environment, sensitive, reliant upon extrasensory perceptions such as seeing, seeing, hearing, and otherwise sensing the presence of spirits. Uh, This mix of uh, medium and as well as using scientific investigation to echo the spiritual movement, Uh, much like their predecessors a century and a half ago, contemporary paranormal investigators differ in their techniques, but are motivated by a shared desire to capture the evidence of life after death and to make some great TV shows from it. I added that to the (laughs) bottom of that article. So currently over 3,000 paranormal investigation teams exist in the United States. And I feel like every single one of them has a fucking television show and more exist worldwide. Paranormal investigators use a wide variety of investigative methods in their attempts to find ghosts and therefore life after death. So of course, when we look at an article like this and we talk about movies reflecting society, we have a group group of people who have decided to make movies about this phenomenon and obviously there's a bunch of tv shows out there as well too but we focused on four main movies uh that we each brought to the table where we you know paranormal investigation is used as a as a main focus in the film how well was it used uh did it did it flow the way we were expecting it to was it realistic was it not we're going to get into that discussion so why don't we have scotty lead us off with the first film All right, so the first film of our topic this evening is The Haunting, which was released on August 25th of 1963, when Dr. Er, It was directed by Robert Wise and adapted from The Haunting of Hill House novel. When Dr. John Marquet, a scientist, invites Eleanor and Theodora to the ancient Hill House to investigate reports of paranormal activities in the mansion, things start getting out of hand. Now, so yeah, this is a... A first time watch for me as well. And this is like a very well known film, I believe, because obviously The Haunting of Hill House that came out on Netflix took the story on and just expanded on it. I thought, it, and also The Haunting. Remember the one with Catherine yep. Cedar Jones and she's super sexy in it? Yeah, and I think um, it had Owen Wilson's first appearance in film yeah, as well. Yeah. Like that was the remake from what was it, the 90s? Yeah, I, I believe 1999. Yeah. Yeah, 1999. Um, but yeah, this was a very interesting watch. And a very uh, great, a good choice for this topic, I feel. Like, it's definitely, like, covers, like, with the whole uh, investigators coming to a specifically haunted mansion to figure out if this is actually a truly haunted scenario or not. Um, So I I just want to kind of go with our guest first. But uh, Dave Z, what did you think? Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tell you what I liked first, and then I'm going to tell you what I disliked. And... What I liked is the narration. I liked getting into the head of, of our of our lead here, mm-hmm. um, Eleanor. And I really enjoyed getting into her backstory. And, you know, she has issues going on. She never feels like she truly belongs. And how she feels that, that what's happening here when she's going to this to Hill House is going to be something that's going to be a life-changing event. And you feel for her. You don't know what exactly is going on with her. You get a touch of it in the beginning. But I liked that aspect of it. Um, I like what's with the idea of the um, the investigator, um, Mr. What's his name? Uh, Mark Way. Mark Way. John Mark Way. John. Call me John. Yeah. Tell him John. Uh, <laughs> We're, for same friend. We're all friends here. Yeah. Call me John comes in and uh, I get his, the motivations of the different characters are cool. John doing his thing, the doctor, and then the uh, the other gentleman who's coming in, uh, who's uh, going to be the eventual owner of this. And I love, and let's always say I'm a sucker for this. 
I love the when you get the backstory of something. Mm-hmm. When, yes. When the movie opens and you say, okay, this house was built at this time and then this happened and these are these inhabitants and then this happened. They suffered a tragic death. This mm-hmm. one hung herself. This one, I am a sucker for, you could put that, it, that's something that is sorely lacking in a lot of modern movies. Sometimes you see it, they do it in Oculus. They do it in Clown a little bit. They go into the mythology, uh, th- that movie Clown. And yep. sometimes they still do it. I always consider it a throwback to the 80s, though, because that was like a big thing back then. Of course, this is, you know, 1963. But I mean, I like those aspects of it. But, but I And I, I really like Theo. I like the character. Yeah, I love Theo. Yes. And she's really Excellent cool. Excellent character. Right. And I I kind of think that, that she's gorgeous as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I like I like her character. I like you know, I, I like all the stuff going on here. But I, and I also like the breathing door effects. I, I think that's a highlight of the yes. movie. Yes, absolutely. So cool. Ahead of its time for all that stuff. Um, the climax I really like, and I like the end of the movie. Okay, those are all my likes. Now I'm gonna say something which I don't think is going to be popular because I know how the general public horror fans feel about this movie. This is the second time I've seen this movie. The first time I it was for it was last year we watched it for exploding heads and I was hoping that my thoughts would change this time but honestly this is a movie that I think it's a two hour runtime or an hour mm-hmm. fifty five whatever it is yep. I legitimately think and I'm not saying this to be a smart ass or anything I think you could have cut thirty minutes out of this film and it would have been a much better movie I find it a little bit too talky and a little bit too dull. I, I I'm kind of on the same page with you on that one because yeah mm-hmm. like the two hour runtime is a bit much for the story I feel like it could have easily been shortened down because one thing that this kept bringing like to my head like to make me think like our a movie that I wanted to continue to compare this to even with like although I was trying not to is Legend of Hell House like that one like I and Legend of Hell House did that where it was an hour and twenty around ninety minute runtime. And it was short, concise, and to the point. And I wish now they was that also a paranormal investigation? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because that was one I almost brought up. Like we wanted to try doing movies we hadn't like the picks yeah. for us. We wanted to do stuff we hadn't seen. Before, yeah, we wanted so. to pad our numbers. So yes, this yes. is why we chose <laughs> movies that we hadn't seen before. <laughs> but yeah, <it's> okay. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, yeah, the hour and a half runtime would have been a perfect for this film. I think it would have made it just a lot easier to digest. And I agree with both of you. I think when you're doing a paranormal investigation film, I agree. The backstory with Hugh Crane and his wives were very important to build up the reason why you're going to the house. You know, we need a reason why paranormal shit has happened here and why we're going to go. And angry spirits and mystery deaths and a child being, you know, locked in their room and basically left to die and, you know, a a servant killing herself. Like all this, all this sets up for perfect paranormal investigation. But I agree with you, Dave, that it was a little too talky and it just pulled out that paranormal investigation too much. You had too many repeats of the same thing um, where you could have just had some really, you know, good concrete scenes like where Eleanor and Theo are in the bedroom the first time that that haunting happens that could have been the main focus of here's a paranormal how are they going to investigate this and I felt like the investigation piece of this like I I wasn't quite sure was Dr. Mark Dr. John Markaway trying to prove it or disprove it like what was his stance I I didn't quite get that (laughs) yeah like Wow, did he yeah. agree that there was hauntings or did he not agree there was hauntings? And I, I found that was the confusing part for me. Yeah, because I think like I think he was trying to prove that there were just for the fact that his wife shows up later trying to convince mm-hmm. him that it's not where he's believing that it is. So mm-hmm. that, that's the only kind of reason I'm thinking maybe he's trying to prove that it is. But yeah, like his motivations weren't very clear, honestly. Yeah. Like, I just um, didn't hmm. get that piece, so... You know what it reminds me of without saying as much? Remember in... You guys have seen 1408, right? Yes. I have not, actually. I have, yeah. Okay. Well, in 1408, uh, John Cusack's character, I believe it's John Cusack, is... Uh, he, he... I believe he's a writer, and he makes a living off disproving hauntings and other things like that, and that, that's his gig. And he goes to room 1408 at this hotel because he is looking to try to explain, to disprove it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I think there's also a part of him that also, to coin that phrase, I want to believe. Yes. I think yes. that's what it is. And and they and they have different reasons for, for them wanting to believe. It's explained in 1408 in that. I don't think it, it comes off here, but I think that's the vibe I got is that he's, 
he's disproven things and he he's going to continue to search, not necessarily expecting it to happen and probably, you know, put, put a gun to his head. Do you believe in it? He's probably going to say no. But I do believe that he wants to see something. He wants proof of life after death. That's what I look because I think, isn't that what a lot of people do? I mean, that's as human yeah, beings. Makes, don't a yeah, lot well, of that's what the are. article was, right? right? That's that's where right. people we may moved away from traditional religion involvement but that means we we haven't moved away from the belief of an afterlife or wanting to know what happens when our heart stops beating and our brain stops working what happens to the rest you know our souls quote unquote right absolutely dave i i think you're 100 maybe he is definitely sitting on the verge and i think to go back to your point earlier about some things being you know dragged out here the scene where theo and, and eleanor move into the same room they fall asleep in the bed and Eleanor feels the crushing of the young girl's hand. She thinks yes. it's Theo holding her hand, but it's actually it's the cool. ghost. I never got why there, that would have been a perfect opportunity to go through the house as a paranormal investigator and maybe found a diary of the young girl talking about her last days. Yeah, because they really and, don't actually yeah. do any true investigation of the house. No. They just kind of live in there and just kind of see if anything happens. Right, and and stuff happens like they get distracted with the dog going out. Like they they chase a make believe dog that doesn't exist outside or noises outside, and they all stick around in the house. And you know what? I always find this shit's funny, right? I did a tour once of um, something here near me called Dundurn Castle. And we were the last people on the tour. There was two of us in the tour guide. And we went all through the kitchen and throughout this old, you know, home slash castle, there were bells because servants would ring the bell to, to get service, right? Or whatever. And we're, we're, we're standing at the front. We finished the tour. We're getting ready to leave. And all of a sudden the fucking bell goes off and we turn hmm. to the tour guide and we go, oh, there's other people here. And he's like, um, no, I got the fuck out of that fucking house. <laughs> I'm going to tell you two right now. I was like... Yeah. You know, I like to think I'm brave and I would be like, hey, ghosty. No, I was like, all right, ghost, peace. Have a good night. I see you're done. I got it. No problem. Um, so I always find it interesting that people stick around. And this shit yeah. like this starts happening. They're like, oh, my God, the, the, the door is breathing. We should stay. You know, <laughs> I always right, find like, I mean, but I guess if you are a paranormal investigator, you would want to stay to like kind of but figure it out. But like, the other people weren't. Yeah, I was going to say, because <laughs> there was only one true paranormal investigator in this group. Um, and yeah, the they one had thing reasons. Remember, yes. that's what I like about the movie. That's one of the pluses is that the people, remember, they said that half the people chickened out. They invited yep. more. They didn't show. and this. But people that were there, they all had a vested interest. They were all different reasons. They wanted to, to stick it out, yep. especially Eleanor. Because yeah, so like, Eleanor was drawn yeah. to the place. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, yeah, that's actually one thing I wanted to bring up, too, is this house. I just love the setup of this house because, like, they even talk about it, how the doors and everything are off angle and the doors will just kind of slowly close on their mm -hmm. own or they'll open on their own. And like everything is just built just at this wrong angle. So it like also just kind of gives like that vibe like, OK, was this house built to house like paranormal entities? Was this like meant to be a place just because of how was often it just a bad contractor? It yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that idea about that, like where it's just like there's all these wrong angles in the house and just like everything like is just kind of off kilter just a little bit. And like and then you get that scene with Eleanor where she's, you know, drawn to the staircase, the spiral staircase where she's going up and like just like in her head, like just kind of talking to like talking out loud. But like, yeah, it seems like she's wanting to believe there is something there that's drawing her even closer. And I really do like enjoy a lot of what Eleanor goes through in this like it's very interesting and like I'm just uh but yeah like there's just certain things where like we we're saying it's a bit too talky I would have liked to seen something happen a little more because this was very uh like it felt like it wasn't like the house was actually trying to harm them or anything like that it almost just felt kind of like a joke house in a way or like a fake haunted house like you'd go to during Halloween where it's just like oh door closes for no reason oh opens up for no reason something just to kind of spook you a little bit there wasn't I... a lot like a true haunting it felt like but isn't that more of a true haunting like if we think of the haunting yeah remake, like in a realistic right? haunting. yeah i guess that you is you know true. and hugh crane comes down with all the children like i i remember seeing that ending scene and i was like okay cgi like get stop getting so excited um <laughs> but it, this is more subtle this you know one of our questions we have on here is you know, is is this this is percent paranormal investigators in a, or paranormal investigation in realistic stance? Yeah, it probably does. 
like this is probably more react like realistic you would hear voices you would doors would close on their own i did forget about the i did forget about the voices okay yep yeah right like you know maybe this is you know also it's 1963 and their limits to be what they could do but maybe it's that more subtle haunting that's more scary yes right and that's what he says too keep keep in mind this is coming from the perspective of somebody that we are saying is probably a non-believer a man of science who who has hope but i you know i i i I took it a different way when he said that it was built a certain way and that the doors were going to close because of that i thought that was just him giving a scientific explanation for what is truly a haunting and that was his way of describing it i could be wrong but that's what i got from it and then they also make a point to say that in, in there's no proof in all of human existence of a ghost actually harming a human being. Yeah. And they say that as well. So we're not yeah. gonna see that type of haunting right. in this movie. Yeah. Although we do is- see people kill themselves. So I mean that's mm-hmm. you know, but so nobody else thought that, that that maybe that dude was just saying that as a way to pass it off as a man of science. Oh yeah, it was built this way. That's why that door closes. Like, Instead of it, saying, Oh, it's a haunting, you know. It didn't dawn on me, but you bringing that up, like it makes perfect sense now, actually. I'd like to read the book. It's 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 a book yeah. by Shirley Jackson. I, I would really love to read the book. I actually do have the audio book. I just have not had a chance to listen to it yet. Oh man. Yeah, because I was kind of like diving Good deep call. with uh, those books because I got that one and I got the uh, Hell House book because uh, the Hell House and Legend of Hell House were just like so different with what they were able to show. But yeah, it's, that's a movie I'll talk about in another day. But like, yeah, this one, like I, w- I want to read the book to see like if there's more explanation in it. Gotta it, be. Absolutely. If we were to look at the ending scene here and, uh, you know, she's, as we give spoilers in this in this section of our podcast, Eleanor is driving away. She's been sent away by herself. <laughs> I don't know why they thought this woman was okay to drive by herself. But anyway, then we went and had the ending of the film. And she crashes, you know, in the same tree area where the other, the first wife crashed. And there's a line that Mark Way delivers and he says, the house has what it wants now. It will be satisfied for a little bit. Did anyone else think that that was an odd thing to say? (laughs) Or was it just me to be like, okay, they have her soul. I know the house just wants her soul. Like, that's where I couldn't get where this guy stood. It was like he believed in science. He didn't believe in science. Oh, by the end, he believed. He that's, believed. That's, okay. that's the yeah. point. That's what right? I think that that everything Eleanor told him, he eventually was like, you know what? I I keep seeing proof positive. You know, the proof is in the pudding. This happens. This happens. You know what? This Eleanor. You know, maybe we shouldn't be interfering. She is so dead set that that she has to be here and that there's a reason and everything else and that she has to be at this house. I think it's almost like that's why I think it kind of makes it a bit of a happy ending when it's supposed to be tragic. Yeah. Yeah. She yep. got what she wanted, and I well, think she had nowhere else to go. Way. Right too as True. well, right? <laughs> so, and um, yeah. and I think it also uh, like he truly believed by the end because for one, his wife who was a skeptic, like she came off straight up being a skeptic about this from the beginning. Mm-hmm. She comes out and saying something happened, freaking out at the very end, like when she pops out from behind the tree and Eleanor crashes into the tree itself. Yeah, like, like she's running like Bigfoot, yes. running the tree. <laughs> but you, like, and you can you can see like she like something happened to her because she's like still freaked out. And then, you know, that's when he even said there must have been something in that car with Eleanor that caused the crash because she mm-hmm. didn't drive into that uh, tree herself. Mm-hmm. And so the I, concept that the house now has her and that it will be satisfied, you know, kind of summing off that the house is in control. Yeah. And then her voice, you know, sends us out, as Dave was saying, the narration of the closing of Eleanor basically saying the final monologue about the house was really well fitting. Yeah, yeah, like I love the beginning that monologue and the very end monologue with that narration. Like that that just kind of like a nice bookend for this film. So as a paranormal investigation film, would we say that this is pretty decent, pretty accurate? Yeah, I would say for the most part. Yeah, like at least with like the way they like I like you said, I wish they would have done more actual investigating and like just kind of rifling through the house a little more to try to solve this mystery instead of just kind of just staying there and seeing what happens. But yeah, for the most part, like it's, you know, this, uh, it's not like a bad representation of it. Awesome. What do you think, Dave? You know, I think that it was kind of shoehorned in as a, a plot advancement device. We had to get her to this house. Mm-hmm. What's going to be the reason for it? And I think it's like, how do you get people to a haunted house? How do you get people together for what's going to lead to this? I mean, I'm okay with it. 
when like even when you guys mentioned this to me as a paranormal investigator i had to think about it i said wait a minute how is the haunting that and then i again i've only seen it one time then i started watching it and it comes clear early in the movie when the guy makes a visit to the old lady's house the last descendant's relative and you know that i'm like okay so they're going here for the research but it seems like he does do a lot of talking to the doctor and they do talk it's almost like they're theorizing mm -hmm. but as far as a representation of a paranormal investigator I would say it, it's it's kind of shoehorned in. I mean, it's see, shoehorned sounds bad, but I mean, it's a plot device to get specifically Eleanor to the house and to get other people there. I don't know if it's a strong representation in that aspect is all I'm saying. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I think you got you know? some valid points there. I think it's a strong representation of what real hauntings look like, mm -hmm. uh, especially like with noises and, you know, and even if then, if I heard like a little kid cackling and laughing i'd be getting the fuck out of there i would not be sticking around yep. for any of this shit um mm. i'd be terrified <laughs> and you know and you know me i'm a sucker for going to abandoned houses and probably going to get myself killed one of these days but if i ever walked into an abandoned house and then i heard just creepy little children laughing or weird shit like that happening i would be getting the fuck out of dodge right so i think it's very accurate to hauntings but i think for paranormal investigation i agree i think they slapped that on there shoehorned it in just as an advocate to get eleanor to the house and we could see eleanor's relationship with the house i agree yes. dave um but yeah so overall if, if it's a good movie for 1963 it's an interesting watch but let's move on to our next one and this was dave's pick so scott bring us in all right so the next movie we are going to jump into is poltergeist which was released on june 4th 1982 a dream home becomes the house from hell as evil spirits rise up to possess the soul of an innocent child. And this was directed by Toby Hooper, uh, who also had Steven Spielberg behind the helm more as producer. Um, of course, there's a lot of debate on that, but that's not what we're here for. <laughs> we're just going from what I on DB said. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. is it Toby Hooper or Tobe Hooper? There you oh go, boy. Dave C. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that just for you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good old Tobe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, since you are the one that uh, brought this movie for our topic today, why don't you... Uh, Go ahead and give your thoughts, Dave. Well, this was very easy for me to, to choose. When you guys said choose a movie with paranormal investigators, it was one of those things that was just no thought whatsoever. It's like the equivalent of someone saying, give me a movie about a shark. I'm going to say Jaws. You know, yeah. it's just... It's just, it is what it is with it. This movie is a personal favorite of mine. It's probably, it's in, depending on the day of the week, it's in my top 10. So it's been, it's it's one of my favorites. I've been watching it at least once a year since I was a kid. It's a family favorite. My wife happens to adore it as well. So that helps. We watch it a lot. It's something that it's nostalgia. It's it's me living in the 80s and experiencing what happens because of when this movie is filmed and, and being a kid at that time. And aside casting that aside, it holds up. It's to me, it's that damn good of a movie. I, I think it's a masterpiece. I think as far as what you're talking about with paranormal researchers coming in, you get it in, in so many different ways. You get the, the first group that comes in with the two guys that are just technical. And then the, the, the woman who runs it and what they do. And then, you know, one of them checks out because he gets bugged out, <laughs> rightfully so. And yep. then, then we get Tangina, the, the psychic one, coming in at the end. And she's a different type of paranormal investigator who uses no tools at all, who strictly uses her feels, comes in and she feels. She, she has a touching, she could touch the outside world in a matter of speaking. And I don't think that nobody can convince me that there's anything wrong with this movie. I don't say that about too many movies, but it's it's almost magical uh, from film from filmmaking perspective. The soundtrack, the acting, the stuff we see, the fact that it's only PG is, is kind of insane when you see some of the stuff that that, that, that happens. And then as yeah. an adult, as an adult, it's scarier for a different reason. Uh, after having a child and seeing that. It, that's what makes it even nowadays. I appreciate it. I think even more, I didn't even know if that was possible, but seeing a family who can't leave, you can't leave. People can say anything they want. You're in a house and they take your little girl and you know that that little girl is in that house somewhere. There's no way you're not leaving. You're not going to leave that house until you leave with your child, this poor little baby. You know what I mean? And it's just the things that happen throughout from, from the opening to the closing of this film. I just think that as far as this type of haunted house type of movie goes, 
I don't think you could top it. I just think it, it's an incredible film. I am right there with you because yeah, like this is one that I grew up watching as a little kid, scared the shit out of me back then. Now I like I come back to it and watch it with more of a clinical eye. And yeah, you are right with like this is one of those when paranormal investigations get brought up for films. This is one that you have to go to. Like they bring in, like you said, the technical team that are end up being way over their head with something that they can't even comprehend on how to deal with. So they call in the expert. And even she starts to struggle because of like just how powerful these entities are because there's so many of them. And like I also wanted to bring up too that I think this might be one of the first uh, horror films to kind of bring in the whole white noise aspect of like the paranormal too with the whole static screens and all that stuff. And like, yeah, this is like, and it's like this one is like a true where it's like they're investigating, trying to figure out how to like, close this down there is no skepticism with this one like they're like they show like right up from the beginning like all right can you explain why this chair is all of a sudden just sliding across the kitchen floor and like it like it's straight up like yeah there is no like skepticism you they are trying to investigate on figuring out how to cleanse this house of these spirits which i find a very uh straightforward task and i don't think it would have been done any better if it wasn't by steven spielberg and toby hooper the way they directed and worked on this film together and Heather, how about you? So I, I echo similar sentiments. I don't think um, I don't think anyone could walk into this movie and say it's not a well-made film. And if we look at it from a peril, paranormal investigation side, I think it's really well done for a couple of different reasons. I think there's some really good comedy that's included in here that's not really like it's not necessarily laugh out loud, loud funny, but it gave me a chuckle. Like there's one part where Dr. Marsha Leith is sitting there with her two technicians having a conversation and she says something like ghosts and something slides across the table. She's like, demons? Like, <laughs> <laughs> because it's mad that it got called a ghost. Um, and then the scene where they're explaining to her, the parents are explaining to Marsha what's happened and her hands are shaking as she's yes. having the tea poured. Mm-hmm. And then where Stephen's boss comes to visit him and the piano slides as Stephen's trying to get him out of the house. I thought that those were really clever and just really good signs of an entity occurring. And I agree 100% with Dave. I think as much as I'm like, oh yeah, I would leave at the first sign of trouble. If my daughter, who yeah. I could hear, was somewhere mm. in that house, I'm not fucking going anywhere mm. until mm. I get her back. So yeah, I'm doing everything in my power. Right. So that all to me is good writing because you're including these really creepy things that are happening. But that core reason of the child is missing, but yet, you know, it's not like the child's missing and you and, and there's no hint that the child is there. You're able to talk to the child through various means, whether electronically through the TV or whatnot, electronic waves. And you can hear her and you can hear her fear yes. for whatever is chasing her. And that was all really well done. And the paranormal investigators reaction of the one leaving, the one choosing to stay, the dialogue between the husband, the wife, and I can't remember who the main investigator is, the woman that comes in at the end. Tangina. Tangina. Yeah, Tangina is excellent it's excellent that whole delivery is excellent like the part where she's like who is tougher on carol ann when the parents are like oh and and the dad's like i've never spanked her he's like i don't give a shit if you spanked her or not you just need to tell her right now to do something so she'll listen (laughs) like that is some awesome delivery and i think it just speaks to the fact that this was written well and it included reasons for them doing what they were doing so yeah yeah like and like that's another thing about this film too is like you feel for this family because this family is just so wholesome and like just it is a well that they're is, real too yeah like you they're real. feel so like this is like a real family yeah like i mean like you even see like the alone time with the parents like in their bedroom and you see the mother just like smoking a joint and the husband just chilling and ch- they're just laughing and having a good time by themselves when the kids are in bed like you just like you feel that this is like a true legitimate family like and like you feel for what ends up happening to their poor daughter and then of course you know the trauma that happens to their freaking poor son who gets grabbed by a freaking oh. monster tree and then and the tormented clown? by his clown. <laughs> yep. Oh, and clown. it ties back into the pool and and even the oh. equipment that they bring to kind of do the investigations with and how her room kind of becomes a no-go zone. It was just really, <laughs> it was really well done. And then the when they cross over or even creating that kind of, um, I guess you could say, 
portal or gateway and throwing the tennis balls through to see yes. if they come through and coming out with that slime. And of course, if we, you know, retrace back to the reason why the paranormal events are occurring and where mm. the house was built on, it yeah. makes a lot of sense. Like everything is like yeah. check, 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 check. And I think that's why this movie really stands out and stood out for Dave so much as a paranormal, a great example of paranormal investigators going to a haunted house that's actually good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, like, I love the fact, you know, this movie is just titled Poltergeist. And that is exactly what these entities are, because poltergeists are the ones that are, are picking up and moving objects and throwing them across the room. Like, that is like a legit thing. And so, like, I thought that that was a very fitting for the title that they use this for this movie and that that's the type of ghost it was it wasn't just oh we're just like ghosts closing doors or slowly opening them or just like something out of the corner of your eye nope nope these things are just throwing shit around and like you're sitting there going yeah there is no explanation for this except for this place is fucking haunted <laughs> like, no they're they're poltergeists not ghosts they get yes. very upset when you call them ghosts but now, <laughs> you know what i mean though. <laughs> right i know i'm just being i'm just being <laughs> so it's interesting because the first time I saw this movie, it, it, it ends and I'm like, how we got 25 minutes left of this film still? Oh, I thought yeah. they solved the oh, fucking so problem, right? Oh. <laughs> and then you realize nice. they did not solve the problem. So I want to ask you two one question about that. Does that mean that the paranormal investigators and the medium failed? Or does that yes. just mean the poltergeist was too powerful? So we'll let Dave go. Well, I guess you could say either or because she comes out and he's like, this house is clean. You know, you get that old thing. Like, okay, house is clean. Thanks for wrapping up. Let's go. And then <laughs> not so. So is Tangina a failure in what she's doing? Or are, are the poltergeists just that strong? I think at the end of the day, it, it's both. I think I think when you're dealing with something otherworldly or something that it actually the sad part is it is our world. They're in the same world we're in. Mm -hmm. They haven't passed over and they're still here. And that that scene, there's there there are scenes in this movie which are so emotional. And that with that scene when they videotape them coming down the stairs and they watch back and you can see they're actually human beings walking with white things around them. And yeah. there's that one that comes out at the end and then the one woman's looking at him, the first investigator, she's like, they're so alone. They're so lonely. And she's like almost on the brink of tears, feeling bad for these people. And there's just so much heart. And, and ultimately, nobody knows for real. I mean, Tangina, obviously, she has a strong connection. We see how powerful she is because even that one scene, <laughs> and it's a little comedy too, when he, she asks a question and then uh, Craig T. Nelson tries to answer with her mind and she doesn't even see. She said she was the best. I'm trying to answer her with her mind. And she's like, oh, I am. She goes, I just don't like tricky answers. You know, <laughs> she's powerful, man. So if someone of that power still can't do it, I just think it's a bit of both. It's just when you're dealing with the unknown, all bets are off, I guess. Yeah, yeah like I think uh, I am going to go with the route that, yeah, she did not fail. I think that these this was just a situation that was too powerful for her. Cause I bet you like she would be able to shut these poltergeists down if it was just one poltergeist, but this is hundreds of poltergeists on top of a burial site. And I think the power there is just way too much. So I don't think she failed. Cause like, yeah, she, she knows what she's doing and she's done this plenty of times from what you can tell from this movie. And so like, I think it's just the power of the, people there and the entities there that are causing all of this are just too much for her. Yeah, I, I would agree 100%. And I think a lot of that backs back to being a house being built on a, on a burial ground. Yes. Because that's their home now. And now we've, you know, the, the family has invaded their space. So you may push back the spirits but you'll never get rid of all the spirits and you know paranormal investigators do talk about how angry spirits or spirits that are resentful that they're dead will continuously come back for vengeance not go to the light because they're angry and they don't want to leave and i think that's what the beast was supposed to represent mm -hmm. um yeah i i always thought that that was interesting when i first saw this movie though because i remember when i was like so what's going on like are we going to watch them pack for 25 minutes like i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> the purpose of this and then i got it and i think the special effects still hold up today i yeah. think the the father freaking out at his boss being like you didn't move the cemetery and the house basically you know imploding on yeah. in on itself and then when they go to the hotel i do enjoy the little um 
you know, pushing out the TV of the yes. hotel room. <laughs> yeah. I did think that was pretty funny. And there was some other good writing, something really subtle that happened. So when you think everything's fine and the teenage girl says to her mom, I just want to go to a friend's house for dinner. She, the mom says, that's fine. Um, we're going to be staying at the Holiday Inn tonight. She's like, oh, the Holiday Inn on whatever highway. She's like, yeah. She's like, oh, I remember that. She's like, what? Nothing. <laughs> like, I didn't think she went there, right? With a boyfriend or some other reason. I thought that was really funny. And that's good writing. Like that yeah. is good writing when you can hear those things and be like very real, very connected. It makes you feel like these are people that you're getting attached to. Yeah, I think this was a great example of paranormal investigators going to a haunted house. And I guess you guys agree. Yes, completely 100% agree on this one. This was oh, an sure. excellent. Uh, thank you very much, today for bringing this one to the to the discussion. Of course, I just absolutely love it. I could go on and on about this movie and the heart and the family and how you care about it and how it makes me tearful almost sometimes. Some of the scenes because you care about the family, something you don't see anymore. You care about every member of this family, what yes. they're going to. And there's just that one scene, like you said, about the beast when she's explaining the beast and she goes to us. To her, it simply is another child. But to us, it is the beast. I'm like, oh my God. And then when she yells and she's like, bastard, she's just a baby. And you hear the girl crying. Oh, dude, it's 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 very emotional. I don't know how many movies get that kind of emotion out of me. You know what I mean? It's just, God, man. What well, and it's the writing. We can go back to the writing and the delivery by the actors and actresses and the direction. Like yeah. that's what happen when the, happens when that all comes together like a perfect storm. Yeah, and the exactly. the delivery is, is what you want to see. So- uh, we're going to jump 20 years later, and we're going to move to our next film. All right. So the next film is Noroi the Curse, which was initially released August 20th of 2005, directed by Koji Shirashi. A prominent paranormal journalist named Kobayashi goes missing shortly after completing a documentary. What begins as an investigation into strange noises soon evol evolves into the chilling mystery of a demonic entity named Kakatuba. Or I, I may have pronounced that wrong. Uh, but... You did pretty good, Scotty. All right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, uh, I would say this is probably like the more, like more down to earth, real look at like a paranormal investigation. And it actually felt almost like the paranormal investigation shows that, you know, take themselves seriously and are not like going, oh my God, who's there? Did you see that? Oh my God. Not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not those dumb reality TV show types, but like, like almost like this is a documentary, like a faux documentary. And I've seen like documentaries with paranormal investigations and stuff like that. And that's what this felt like to me. Like, uh, so yeah, we'll just uh, do what we've been doing. And uh, Dave, what are your thoughts? I've always been a fan of this movie. It's for the longest time, you couldn't see it. It wasn't readily available, but it's it's one of the movies that I put on my uh, my found footage challenge list back in the early days of Exploding Heads, and you couldn't see it for a while. But I was always a fan. This is probably the the third or fourth time I've watched it, and it's another one that's long. But actually, it doesn't. You don't feel the time with it like you might some other movies. It's it's so cool because it's your your things are coming from so many different areas. It's like. You see the story of him, and then there's like so many pieces to the puzzle that have to come together. You get the, you know, you get the crazy guy with, well, not the crazy guy, but the super psychic as they introduce him, you know, yes. the, with all the, the stuff on him. The, Literally the, the tinfoil hat guy. The <laughs> tinfoil hat guy, totally. It's so funny. You get him, and then you get the girl who was on that show who experienced the, um, you know, what, what she experienced when she was out with those other two guys, and it was on camera, but they didn't put the whole thing on the show. And then the young girl that, you know, was able to, the psychic girl in the classroom when they were doing that stuff. So you have all these little, and then, of course, the story about what happened with, with the strange neighbor lady who was acting yes. a fool and everybody tried to come to her house. And everything, just the way it, there's so many pieces to this puzzle. And it, it's like, if, if you don't pay attention to the whole thing, you, you could get lost because it's just, you really have to concentrate on this movie, but it's, it's worth it. It's worth it to concentrate on the movie and it's worth it to give you, give it your undivided attention because it all does, it all does fall into place. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's typical as far as like an Asian horror movie in many ways, when you get to the, the third act, when you see the what's and the why's of what's going on here in the beginning, it's, you know, a lot of everything, but it's so well done, and I just think it's I think it's it's been given a second life now because it's uh, Shutter has picked it up, and for like I said for a while you couldn't see it. It, it would come, it would come up on YouTube and then it would be taken down. But it's it's a really good movie. You just have to keep your eyes on the screen, but it's it's worth it to do so. 
Yes, I completely agree. Uh, how about you, Heather? I'm going to let you go first, Scott. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, um, this is, like we were saying, like, we wanted to try doing as many of the first-time watches for this topic when it was our picks. And I have heard a lot about Neroi the Curse, and so I was like, all right, I'm going to f- pick this one because I'm very curious about this. I've been hearing a lot of things about this film, and it fits in the paranormal investigation. Um, Yeah, this one, um, there was a lot of ups and downs with this. Like you said, Dave, like, you have to pay attention to this story because, like, there are just <laughs> so many areas that this goes in. It goes in so many threads. And then it just, as the story goes on, it's tying those threads back together. Like when it comes to the end, like everything makes sense on why they decided to go this route and cover this part of the topic. And I love that this is actually a true investigation. Like this guy is like literally going to neighbors that are talking about the story and like interviewing them, just trying to figure out what this is. And then going on to the next person and then, oh, hearing about this little bit of info. Okay. So I'm going to go investigate this now. And like, and then he's showing like the different TV shows and like hearing about like the stuff that happens there. So he's going to investigate those actors and actresses and like the student that would have the, like the psychic powers. Like it all just like is a true paranormal investigation. Like I said, this feels like a, like it feels like a real documentary. And like the way this was all portrayed was very well done. Cause like at first I'm going, all right, this movie's starting to lose me. And all of a sudden, like something will happen and it'll pull me right back in. And I'm going, oh, oh shit. Okay. All right. This is starting to like make more sense. And there's another new clue added to it. And then it'll, you know, go on this investigation route again. Like I love how this film is represented in this way. Like it does such a phenomenal job of like just kind of covering it and like, making it feel like this has really happened. Yeah, I think that both of you did a really good job of outlining that this gives a really true perspective of what paranormal investigation looks like. I think out of all the movies that we've watched, this is probably the most gritty in that sense. You really do feel like you're watching this dude go through this journey of investigating these various occurrences. I enjoyed the psychic TV show, Uh, clips of that because i thought that that was another thing that's very popular and yes to do that whole like oh what's gonna happen and and i i think it showed one side of it i really enjoyed the latter half of the movie particular when the possession seemed to take very realistic looks like when they canoe out to the middle of nowhere and she's trying to rid herself of the spirit i thought that was a very realistic scene to what you would see happening but it is very long, and I did feel like it was a very best roller coaster for me. There were parts where I was really engaged, and there were parts where I was like, okay, this is obviously a bridge, and I need to make sure I'm paying attention here to get to the next scene. So yeah. I would caution anyone watching this to really make sure you have your full attention. This isn't like something like Grave Encounters, where it's filmed from a found footage pers- perspective, but it's a pretty easy film to follow. Yeah, maybe if you're doing something else, you may miss a couple of jump scares or something like that. But the plot is pretty easy to get of what they're doing. (laughs) It's not out there. The reasoning for the hauntings aren't out there. This is one where you really need to follow along because there's so many characters that are interconnected with each other, which is something that's very common for Asian horror films, as Dave was saying Mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, They tend to be a little bit more complex they tend to be more focused on character development, but I really did feel like this presented a true paranormal investigation, and the ending was quite sad. Um, you felt really bad for what was happening at the end, and especially to that little boy. Like I, yeah, I, I definitely will owe this a couple of watches to get it. I can see why Dave, you know, recommends it, and probably after watching it three times, Dave, I feel like you have a better grip on it than you did the first time you watched it. For sure. Oh well, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this so. is one like yeah, because I started it a couple days ago. It took me about two days to get through because like I was starting to watch it, and then I noticed like after about a half hour, forty minutes, my mind was just getting distracted by the mm-hmm. outside world, not because of the movie, but just because things were happening around the outside world. I'm going, all right, I'm not in the right head state to focus on this right now i'm gonna stop this now and start it back up from this spot the next day and that's what i did and like i made sure i was just in like focus completely on it and i'm glad i did because yeah like i'm i'm easily just sidetracked and distracted when i watch movies so like i'm glad that i was able to give this the full attention because there is a lot that i would have been completely and utterly lost on if i did not do that and did we did we think the message here and this was just something i got was don't be pursuing paranormal shit that you shouldn't be pursuing. Did, did you guys get that message of some things you should just leave be 
and stop digging. Yes, I think uh, once he got to a certain point, realizing like we're putting the pieces together, I think that's when, like, when all the pieces came together, I think that's when he should have stopped. Mm. But he kept going. And that's where I think he made the mistake because it came back with him and pretty much fucked him and his whole family up. Yeah. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, you know, I didn't think of it until you brought it up. I just, the thought never occurred to me, but I guess a lot of the events would not have happened because what's the worst that would happen? The one girl got spooked when she was on that show and the other girl did what she did. But then the, the, the further along everything was pushed and that little girl, what's her name? I should know what the guy says it a hundred times. He's always crying about uh, it. Yeah. Uh, you know? Kyra, K, K, sort of the K, I think. Hold on. I have it written down here. <laughs> but I mean, like she even says at one point, she goes, well, I guess it's too late for all of us. And this is this young girl. She's like eight or something. You know what I mean? And like, they're asking questions and that's her response at one point. She goes, well, I, I guess it's too late for all of us. And it was before she went missing and before all, all the shit hits the fan in every other way. So it's like, yeah, I guess if, if he wouldn't have been, you know, diving so deep into it and, and just would have let things be the way they were, then you're right. A lot of this stuff doesn't happen. It, that's a good point, Heather. It didn't even, you know, it didn't yeah. even occur to me that if he just would have chilled, uh, Nothing would happen. What's the worst that thing that happened, honestly? Because the one family complained because they heard crying baby noises at the neighbor house. That was the worst. And then they yeah. go to the one girl's house and there she heard knocking on the freaking uh, at her house. If they could have left it at that, or those people could have moved or whatever. Yeah. And, and that guy was warning, he said, stay away from pigeons and all that yeah. other stuff, you know. And ectoplasmic worms, that solves it all up. They're they're there. It's almost like I said with freaking with poltergeist. They're in this realm. They're in this world. We just can't see them. So by doing things to, you know, to try and see them, it's you're asking for trouble. Just let them yep. be. You know what I mean? Just if they're out there floating around, best not provoke them. Yeah. Yeah, because you're bringing attention to them when they don't want to be brought attention brought on them. And they and you can to be argue alone. that's what paranormal investigators do. Yeah. Any show you watch with them, it's them pushing things. You know, whether they're real, fake, whatever they're they're constantly pursuing it like the spirit could be like fuck off or i'm gonna murder you and they'd be like what was that spirit are you trying <laughs> to communicate something to us why are you angry and they would still keep pushing and i just think that this movie did a really good job of exploring of this is what happens <laughs> yep because this is right. it's showing like right showing yes. natural human curiosity on something we don't understand and wanting to learn more about it where sometimes our curiosity, just like curiosity killed a cat, curiosity will get get the better of you if you continue to push. This is true. This is true. Well, we have one last movie to talk about, and this is a more recent film. So I'll let yes. Scotty read us in, lead us in with that one. All right. So our final film for our topic today is Terrified, or also known as Aberrados. Oh, weren't you fancy, huh? <laughs> uh, it was released on May 3rd of 2018. And it is uh, directed by Demian Rugna. Uh, paranormal researchers investigate strange events in a neighborhood in Buenos Aires. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, true first time watch for me because I started Ooh. like last. I started it when the year it came out, but I was not in the right headspace. I was really sick, so I turned it off. Um, so I'm glad I came back to this, but this is probably one of the more terrifying films that we watched for this topic for me. Like this one just had like some very unsettling images. And I like that this one brought in a paranormal researcher, like a science, like kind of like a doctor slash scientist, and also had the cop that was just involved with all this stuff. I just kind of like that this was like a ragtag team trying to figure out what is happening in this town. Um, and yeah, like always, I will uh, pass it on to Dave first and let him talk about his thoughts. Well, I quite enjoy this movie. This was in the top, my top 10 the year it came out. I've always been a, a, a major supporter of this one. We talked about it on Watzi uh, an episode or two ago, and it was one that I, I'm not sure who brought it to the table, but either way, I purchased the Blu-ray when I didn't even have to, because you can watch it anytime on Shutter. So that just goes to show you how much I like it. I had to own it. And what you said about creepy images, holy cow, I mean, freaking two in particular, the beginning, the, the, the scene in the tub, and yes. especially later on, that little boy, <laughs> that, 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 that corpse sitting at that table, what a scene, that, oh my gosh, it's just, it's, it's definitely creepy, there are, are things, there are some visuals in this movie that are just out of this world, freaking, like, scary stuff happening, just out of the ordinary, 
visuals that you're not going to forget. I, yeah. I I love the setup of it. I, I I like how it's kind of basically it's almost like a one area, one apartment complex, if you will. That and it's almost like an anthology. It's like three different events happening, and 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 the way they unfold and, and it's told in a you know an unusual sort of way but man as far as the investigators it's interesting where they go with it it's interesting when they come in and it's more straightforward it's what you would expect someone to be if they were to come in your house it wasn't goofy at all it was like okay no. you know what i mean you know how you, a lot of times you see it and it's a lot of times they're almost like caricatures of what you would expect a, por- a paranormal investigator to be oh yeah yeah this is this a lot is more here. realistic yeah right and that's what i like about it and i think it's a really solid film and i i think that it's kind of slept on in um for a lot of us modern horror fans i don't know i just i don't hear too many people talking about it but i, I think it's a great film yeah and it's a shame that this one yeah because this one needs to be talked about more because i'm i'm kind of uh, kicking myself for not watching it back in 2018 when this was released like or at least trying to rewatch it once i was feeling better but i just never got around to it um, but yeah, this film for me, like I, I like that there was like in this team of investigators is just a detective or a cop that's just kind of there along for the ride just because he knows the people in this town and he's just wanting to help them and try to figure out what is going on. And like, he's not believing what he's seeing and the poor guy, just the shit he goes through, like, and the fact that he's the one that ends up surviving out of the team is kind of cra- Well, possibly surviving is that at the end of the team. Because he just kind of disappears at the end. But um, like the investigators almost become obsessed to the point where they're like, well, like we were talking with Noroi the Cursed, they kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And one was almost just like almost worshiping what these things were doing, like it seemed like, because he was just like, just enjoying like so figuring out, oh, if you look at it at this angle, you see, see, there's the thing right there. And like, but he, and he was just loving it. Like he was enjoying it more than he should. I think he was, he should have been more freaked out, but he wasn't. And I think that kind of caused the demise for him. And the other one almost just felt careless in a way, like, because she wasn't giving her full attention to things when they were around her. And like, it, it's interesting how these characters each had a different style portrayed with them. Like, what do you think, Heather? I think that these characters were not prepared for the shit show they were going to walk into. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> I think they had the reason what we're perceiving as relaxed or over superstitious or or over curiosity comes from they had never dealt with something this dark because I almost pee peed my pants watching this movie. <laughs> nice. um, it was fucking scary. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to see that now already I have an issue with paranormal stuff. I don't, you know, I believe in ghosts and other shit. So um, something of this topic is already very emotional for me, let alone something that's this well delivered. Um, the little boy's, corpse sitting at the table like let's just think of that as a mother coming into your kitchen and your son has been tragically killed in an accident which all that stuff was connected together walter was the beginning of it but everything was connected together in this neighborhood and you see him sitting there with a glass of milk and then the milk spills and they put him in the freezer to move the body out there and the freezer starts making noises like it was i think these paranormal researchers had been around the block and we're just like it's going to be anything else that's out of the regular and it was not yeah they were uh, almost at all lax. and and i don't blame them i don't think they were prepared for the evil that they were going to walk into yeah and the one scene that really stood out to me and startled me was when the woman there's that very calm dialogue between herself and the police detective the main female per, um paranormal investigator He's walking around the house having a conversation with her, basically talking about leaving. And all of a sudden, the entity reaches through the wall and twists her neck. Yeah, just out of nowhere. (laughs) Out of nowhere. Um, And I think that that's what you call an appropriate jump scare. And Spanish films that come from Argentina can do those very well. And this whole creepiness of building up to it, and there it is. It's not like in North American films where you have the music and it's building up and you know something creepy is going to happen. Like it just comes from nowhere. And I thought it was yeah. really good in illustrating how things can go horribly wrong during a paranormal investigation. Yeah. And like yeah. that scene alone, like proved like what I was saying, like she was just too lax and like, not like giving it the attention she should have for something that was as dangerous as it was. Yeah, but I don't I, I I don't agree with that statement because I don't think she realized. Like I think that this this spirit was nothing 
that they had ever seen before. That, that's what I mean. Gives, yeah. yeah, something like attention that you don't know is going to be that, you know. Yeah, like she just didn't realize that, like, the, the power of this thing. Mm-hmm. I get you. I get you. What Any thoughts you want to add, Dave? I know we're talking a lot about some certain things. Is there anything that really stuck out to you as creepy in this one? No, I mean, I just like all the scary stuff. Like, like I said, the corpse in the beginning and the voices in the sink and, and um, the <laughs> – the whole thing that I don't know if you guys listen to when we talk about it, but Watson brought something up about the water mm. and it it being a major thing. There's water in the yeah. pipes. There's water in the shower, water yep. to take the pill. There is something in the narrative about water and something being transferred through it in this particular area. And yeah. what is it? We don't know. It's not explained, but it's definitely something to take note of. And I, I'd, I, yeah. I would love for someone to watch it and be able to say – okay, I see what you guys are saying. And I think, and, you know, to give examples, because it's, it's, it's not straightforward, but I'm glad he picked up on it. It's yeah, really actually, interesting. Because yeah, now that you bring that up, there's the, like, it's almost like a sign of something bad about to happen right after the, like, right after water is used. Because yep, that little boy little, drinks it and then gets yep, hit. The little boy yeah. drinks it right from that water fountain out there and then gets hit by the car. The uh, Walter's wife, I think it was Walter, the guy in the very beginning, like she's like has the. Oh sink no, Walter on. was the neighbor. Oh, okay, he was the neighbor. Yeah, but yeah. The the, uh, the but the other guy with his wife, like yeah. she had the water running in the sink and she kept hearing yep. noises in there and then something bad happened to her right after that. That like, yeah. that the girl's husband who becomes a reliable narrator, who we think is who everyone thinks is the unreliable narrator. He's yes. the one that survived it, that quote unquote mentally unstable afterwards, but actually knows what's going on. And the water thing is very fascinating. And obviously the water would connect all the neighborhood houses because that's yep. something that would travel. But I'm wondering mm-hmm. if this is more a cultural thing about Bruno's Aries. If there was an issues with a water system at one point, and mm. this is now building off that because there could be some cultural references to that, right? Yep, exactly. Um, you know, we've had movies about water being tainted, like look at the crazies. You know, that's yeah. about water and, and issues with water systems and chemicals and all that other kind of stuff. So maybe there's something in, in Argentina that would reflect this that we wouldn't get in North America. Like yeah. we would just see that as like, oh, this is a coincidence and this is a theme, but why? Um, so that's a really interesting point. Really, really interesting point. And I guess the only thing I wanted to tie in at the end is we get three new paranormal investigators that show up Yep. <laughs> with the dude who's like, all right, round two. And who did, did we think it was interesting that he could see one of the old paranormal investigators? And what does that mean? Like, why would that paranormal investigator be back? That is a, hmm, that is a good question. Um, yeah. Cause why would he be back? Especially there. I could see him being yeah. back in Buenos Aires at the houses, like being there, like a spirit being trapped there. But yeah, being back at the facility where they're like talking to him in investigation again and interviewing him, like, yeah, that's, I don't know if that's something that could be just chalked up as, you know, oh, horror movie thing at the end, just to kind of give you that last final jump scare, or if there's more to it than that. It could be he wanted to solve the case, or maybe he's evil now, and the demon has possessed him in his spirit, and he's able to travel. What do you think, Dave? Well, aren't they talking to the same guy that at one time he was also on the other side of the table at, at the same place when this happens? Yeah, so they're talking. They're he's so the right. the guy that the survivor, the one lone survivor, right is now meeting with three new paranormal investigators and they're asking him questions about the previous paranormal investigators. Right. And he points and he says, is that guy with you? And they turn around and no one's there. And he says that it's a doctor from, or one of the, one of the paranormal investigators from before. And then the chair gets end up throwing across the room. So we're wondering to why he came like that other paranormal investigator came back or even was him. If it wasn't, maybe it was something else. No, it's him. My my belief is that it's him and he's appearing to just the one guy, obviously, who who, who he dealt with him before and he knows who he is. He knows what what went down. I think he's there to basically give a warning to the guy saying, okay, you've seen what's happened. Don't let these three people sitting in front of you end up like me. Nice. Ah, yes, actually, that's a very good point. Like a reminder or something, you know? Here I am. Keep your mouth shut this time. Remember what happened to me. Yeah. yeah, back to what you were saying earlier, Heather, and what we've been saying the last couple of movies, that if you push it, this is what happens. He's basically yeah. saying, okay, don't push it this time, homie. Just chill. We know it. We know it's evil. How about you get out of that freaking area and, and yep. let evil Evacuate everybody else out of there, too. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, 
I think that's a really good point, Dave. And I think this is a really good example of what happens when paranormal investigation goes wrong, similar to Nori, mm-hmm. and how dark it can get. And I agree, Dave. Just one of the other jump scenes that I really liked was when he's looking across the street and he's talking to the police officer, the one paranormal mm-hmm. investigator. He's like, but I see you in the living room. He's like, I'm not in the living room. That's not me. And we know it's <sighs> yes. the image. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mm. like so so well filmed so well done i hope there's a i've heard that there might be a sequel one day i sign me up like yeah. i would love to see a sequel to this however no matter how they do it if it's a whole new area or if it's continuing on this story i think the film is just made with such high quality the acting the dialogue you know even when it's in a different language you can still read people's emotions and expressions and understand what they're communicating and i just think that this these these four films were great examples of paranormal investigators going to a haunted house that didn't make me want to poke my eyes out like it's <laughs> right. much better <laughs> done than a lot of other films we've seen out there so anything you know what it is yeah right you know what it is you know what this all these movies that you're talking about about paranormal investigators going to a up. haunted house <laughs> <laughs> You know what all this is. You know how all this started, right? This is all because of paranormal activity. Which Absolutely. I happen to love and love mm-hmm. the franchise. But when that movie came around and everybody saw how cheap it was to, to, to invest a couple G's and freaking make a couple M's, let's go in, let's do our thing. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, direct to video, paranormal entity, paranormal this, Amityville paranormal. And then a grave encounters comes along and does a good job. But I mean, mm-hmm. it's just so easy to make and but you didn't see movies like this uh, in even the early 2000s that much. This is a, a a sign of our times. Paranormal Activity came on, and I say it all the time. I give that movie a lot of props because so the stuff that's come after, granted, a lot of it hasn't been good, but everyone has, has tried to imitate it. And now yeah. we get these generic paranormal yeah. investigator movies showing up to an asylum or showing up to this place or a house. And it's just become so blasé, so freaking just, you know, it's, but these are quality flicks. Yes. That's the difference. Talk about any movie like Paranormal Investigators now. It's just, I mean, granted, some of these are recent, like Terrified and stuff. Don't get me wrong, but these, especially the found footage types, and I hate to knock it because, you know, I love it. But that's, sadly, that's what's happened. It's become like a, like a trope. It's just become a trend uh, of these type of movies. And it's really unfortunate, but I mean, it's like anything, something good comes along and everybody bites it. You know, what are you going to do? Yep. Yep. Cause yeah, Yeah. I was going to say, cause like, that is why I, uh, I really dig the types of movies that spoof these types of characters now. Like, uh, cause I almost brought up on this, uh, for this topic, but Heather was like, no, let's go with uh, first time watches was ghost killers versus bloody Mary. Cause they're spoofing that whole paranormal investigators going somewhere. They don't believe something's happening. And yeah. getting their comeuppance just done. Well, and it's you know, more spoof. making fun of it, where yeah. these ones were more serious. Exactly. Right? Like, um, so I guess for our final segment, which is out of the dark, it's it's just our opinion based on whether we think um, you know, paranormal investigation shows are legit or if we think they're full of shit. Uh, or in general, in the paranormal investigator realm that seems to become quite popular with over 3,000 different paranormal investigator teams registered in the United States. So I don't know who Mm. wants to start off the conversation who has a strong opinion on it. Um, Hmm. Um, Well, you know, you are like, Heather, you know my thoughts already on these two specifically, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Yeah. Like, um, I'm, I'm of the sort that, you know, I do believe that there are ghosts out there and that some of these people like paranormal investigators in general i feel like the general mass of them are bullshitters but i believe there are a few that are out there that actually do good work like and actually are legit like i dislike ed and lorraine warren because they seem to take advantage of a lot of people that had probably undiagnosed mental conditions and like we're not actually like dealing with true hauntings and they kind of perpetrated that and exploited that from what i have read and discovered but at the same time they were people that i think were unwittingly unwillingly exploiting them i don't think they were doing it on purpose i think they truly believed in what they were doing and i believe they have had some experiences where that stuff was legit like where they dealt with a lot of paranormal things but like at the same time they i think their popularity as paranormal investigators got them too far and they started doing things 
and just claiming it as paranormal. I mean, because I think they were also one of the ones to say that the Amityville horror was a legit paranormal incident when it wasn't. And so, like, situations like that where I think, like, yeah, like, there can be these paranormal investigators that, like, are legit doing this and, like, they believe and are, you know, not doing this for money, but doing this to help and are actually, like, legit people. Then you have ghost adventures, fucking Zach Baggins and his type of bullshit, where it's the reality TV show paranormal investigators, and I don't believe a single one of them. Mm. I think they do this all for the glory and popularity and the name recognition and the fame. So it's it's like a double-edged sword when it comes to paranormal investigators. I believe certain ones and I don't believe others because when it becomes like a reality TV show, I'm not buying into your bullshit. Snap, snap, snap. (laughs) Scott doesn't buy into your shit. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Dave, do you have some thoughts? Well, you know, as far as like the early ones, like the Warrens are concerned, I kind of have mixed feelings about them based on different things that I've read. And obviously they're the most popular ones, but I guess that's the best I can say. And I'm not going to sit here because I've read good things and I've read bad things. And yep. I have read recently something that their daughter was saying. We talked about it. Yeah, on I remember you talked show. about it on your last show. Yeah. It kind of hit home with me and it made me like, like appreciate Lorraine Warren. I don't think this woman, this girl has any reason to bullshit because she said, I want no, no part of it. I, it, 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 it's a little bit scary for me. I stay away. She's not trying to make a profit off it. She could, you know, easily this woman could take her parents' legacy and turn that into something, and yeah. she hasn't. Yeah. So because of that, it, it makes me more prone to believe what she's saying. And she wasn't saying anything outlandish. She was just saying that after when my father was older and sick, my mother would be on the phone till three, four in the morning sometimes with with people, ex clients, not even making money off them, just talking them off a cliff and saying this and this. She really believed it. So yeah. I think there's contradictory things, not contradictory, but there's different sides to it, I guess. Yeah. With the well, you're but always going to be to heroes to some villains to the other, depending on what your interaction is. Right. Yep. So Absolutely. that's right. why I'm very torn with them. Cause like, I was like, yeah. I used to just have like such dislike for them, but then yeah, like hearing the other things about them, it's like, yeah, I can, I believe like they believe they are doing what is best. And sometimes it works and sometimes it unfortunately does not. And they, they get labeled another. Yeah. I don't know enough about them. I, I have no, nothing to add. I don't, I know the movies, which I'm assuming aren't accurate representations of, of who they are. Sure they're coded, of right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have no skin in the game in that area. I just find that um, they've, <sighs> You know, their expansion of of what we see with the Conjuring movies and stuff like that. I think it's, I think those are fun. Um, And I do believe in poltergeists and I do believe in ghosts and I I don't like to fuck with that shit. So I probably would have called the Warrens if I ran into something back in the day. (laughs) Probably would have, right? Um, Do you have any thoughts, Dave, see on Paranormal Investigators' current ones? Like the ones that have TV shows and stuff? Okay, I, I have not watched any of them. And again, I'm going to say that the movie Paranormal Activity mm-hmm. has a lot to do with that. They came out and people, that movie came out and it became part of like, you know, uh, pop culture in a way. Everybody knew about it was being spoofed and everything else. So it seems like, again, I could be 100% wrong because I don't watch that stuff. So it seems to me that that stuff started getting popular shortly after Paranormal Activity came around. It's never interested me. I, I have I don't I have no interest in reality TV. Period. So it definitely wasn't something that I was going to watch. And I guess if anything would have been really cool, I would have heard about it through the grapevine. So I just what I see on Grave Encounters and some other movies that I've watched, I, I'm guessing is a, almost like a a perfect or a very close representation as to what those shows really yep. are. Yeah, they so, really are very close right. To that. That's kind of enough for me. I I don't have an interest in, it. and I'm not going to sit here on, on, on my high horse and say everybody's full of shit because it's not for me to say. But my opinion is that kind of like with psychics, I do believe in in spirituality and things, and I've seen things. But I also am not ignorant to the fact that everybody wants to make a buck. And believe yep. me. If somebody were to come to me and said, here, let's go and pretend to hunt for ghosts and we're going to make freaking six figures a year. Number one, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not going to lead mm-hmm. anybody. It isn't like um, it isn't like there are some instances where you will, you know, pretend to be something and you'll sit down with someone who's lost a loved one and you're going to give them yeah. false hopes. I couldn't exploit people. Like the Ouija way. um origins, like what they were doing in that. Yeah. Right, Remember that right. movie? Yeah. Correct. But she justified it because she, she, she said, well, I'm making them feel better. What's yeah. the thing between yeah. going here or a psychiatrist? Yeah. So there is something to be said there too, but 
I couldn't exploit anybody out of their money and, and completely fabricate everything, but I, I would go on a ghost hunting show and do that. And it probably is bullshit, but, but that doesn't mean that I don't believe. Yeah. I just don't know if, if we can measure those things with, with man-made tools. I believe in the spirituality. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more likely to believe in like a Tangina, somebody that can go mm. in there and feel a presence and talk to them in a way, but I don't believe in like the Ghostbuster needles and shit right, like exactly. that and measuring this. That's what I think is probably bullshit. Probably. I'm never going to be the type of guy to say, there's no chance. I'm not that close-minded, but I'm sure the stuff you see on TV is almost all folly. It's just yeah. for, to make money. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I find it boring. I remember the first couple of times those shows came out, I was like, oh, I'll check this out because I do believe in this stuff. And and I was like, this is fucking boring. Like, I felt like they would try to indicate that things were happening that weren't and certain things like noises and stuff. And there is a level of houses settling, just noises that occur that you can translate into whatever you want it to be. But when you're doing it on a show, if it's not entertaining, like if you're going to do a ghost hunter show and fake it, you better make me fucking entertained or I'm not interested. Right. I'm not overly concerned about whether it's real or not. I'm concerned about being entertained. And I think that most shows really lack that. And I noticed that, and I know Christian talks about this too, is that when I got into horror podcasting, I got a lot of paranormal investigators on my Facebook friend list. Yeah, me too. Um, and I think that's cool. Like, I think if that's yeah. your your hobby and what you like to do, like, knock your socks off. But I just, I find it, I agree with you, Dave. I don't know if man-made tools can really track or connect to that spiritual side. I think some of us just have that intuitive ability to do that um, more than machines or whatever dowsing rods we create or mm. energy stuff. I, I just don't know. But I think that it's it's money making. I think you're right. It, they found a niche in paranormal activity, made it popular and cool, and you know we're riding this train, this choo choo train of paranormal investigators going to haunted houses. Which is why I say it like that because I get so fucking tired of some of the plot lines that you know they're fake and they go to these haunted houses and turns mm-hmm. out it's not. But these were four films today that we talked about that do it well. Yes, and um, yeah. some more well than others. I think for 1963 is a haunting. It was done well for what they had in 1963, but I think definitely the top three films that we discussed today, excellent, excellent, excellent. So, thank you so much for coming on today, Dave. It was such a oh, pleasure and an yeah. honor to work with you today. Yeah, this was awesome. Thank you. Pleasure was all mine. I, like I say, I listen to the show every episode, and a lot of times I listen to good podcasts. I like. I'm like. Damn, I like to be part of the conversation. And you guys gave me the opportunity to, to do that today and watch four movies, which I enjoyed watching, especially Poltergeist, which is one of my all time favorites. So I'm like, yeah, let's go and talk about this stuff. And I love the way you guys stick to the topic. The topic was about the paranormal stuff. I mean, I went off on my little Dave Z tangents a oh. little bit on the stuff I love. On oh, the show. I do that too. I mean, so. Yeah, but right. But you guys stay focused and it's going to dig about the show. You, you stick to the matter in hand. We're not going to sit here and review terrified and put in these movies. We're going to sit here and discuss little things about them that we like, but we're going to stick to the script and say, these are paranormal investigator movies. Let's talk about that aspect and how good was it represented in the film or, or not. And, and let's talk about that. And that's what I love about the show. It, it, it has a topic and you guys stick to it. So it's Yeah, I definitely need to Heather to rein me in sometimes because sometimes I'll go off tangents. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Tangents are fun. That's why we that's why we have them. Now I'm gonna promo one of your podcasts because I don't want to make you feel awkward in doing it because it is a Patreon podcast. But okay. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, if you are not a Patreon of Exploding Heads, you are missing out. For yes. some reason, if you have been living under a rock for the past five years and somehow miss these three gentlemen on exploding heads you are in a great deficit of some excellent horror movie talk some excellent jokes and brandon's there sometimes too so (laughs) you can find some of their older episodes i think they're on your where are the older ones are they still on horrorphilia dave up to no, episode you, 100? You cannot find anything on Horror Fee anymore. Okay. We have a whole new fee, which is all, it's in the same place as all the other ones were. It's just that we took o- took it over okay. to the Anchor app. So it's it's still on iTunes and Stitcher and everywhere Perfect. else you can find them, but it's just Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast. And episode one through 102 now are there because nice. we're slowly releasing some of the Patreon shows slowly. So it's like, you know, I think they'll be, they'll always be like 30 months behind 
but they, they will drop. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, and you know what? Better late than never. But if you don't want to wait, you should get yourself on Patreon. Yep, and Patreon exactly. is super easy to do. You down the app, download the app onto your phone. You go and you find Exploding Heads, and it's three dollars American for something Canadian because the exchange exchange sucks minimum to listen to these guys. Plus they have YouTube episodes. You won't need Pornhub anymore after downloading <laughs> exploding heads. And you can just look at these gentlemen and that will be enough for you. So I really Thank strongly you. recommend listening to it. $3 a month. We're going to add all of our links. If you like what you heard Dave C today, you're going to like them even more on exploding heads, but he does have a free show. So for some reason, you just want to try him out for a little bit to see how he is. And do you mind plugging to where that is, Dave, so they can check out uh, the Watsi Party? Right. See, now now the Watsi Party Horror Show also is, uh, is not, it go, we, we resequenced it from the Horrorfia feed to the Anchor feed. So it's, again, look it up. There's only one W-A-T-Z-E-E. If you look that up on iTunes or anywhere else that you can find the podcast, you're going to find us there. See, I'm the Z and he's the Watt. And yeah. It's 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 different than Exploding Head. It's it's a it's a three act show, and I think you'll you'll really like it. And Watson, if you don't if you've never listened to Mr. Watson, then I don't know what you're doing because he's great too. And so. you could have found him on Horror Corridor, which I hope his horror core stuff still exists. I hope so too. I'm sure he has. It. I'm, I'm sure he has it. You know I what hope I mean? he does. Yeah, he's um, not the kind of guy that would have it not. Yeah, I I'm would sure assume. he's got it somewhere. And he's also been on the Rotten Roundtable with Mark Nato. He does a weekly horror show now. Uh, the weekly horror show that he does, I know you mentioned it earlier. I can't remember it off the top oh, of my um, head, though. Horror Movie Weekly. Horror Movie Weekly. So if you've heard him on there, and if you haven't, please go check him out. And you can listen to him and Dave C. if you want to listen to two very well-spoken gentlemen with a very well-produced show. Uh, some great music. I love the party theme, partly because I love parties. Oh. <laughs> 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 I love eating and drinking. Those are my those are my jams. So (laughs) have fun, enjoy yourself. Right, 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 Dave. One day, Dave and I are going to have lots of fun enjoying some greenage together. In either, you know. Please. Well, oh, maybe invite no. Scott. We'll see. Yeah. Scott's yeah, I, I, well, I better be there, damn it. <laughs> well, I'll take you guys to see Christian. We'll I mean, surprise him. You'll come up. We won't tell Christian, and then we'll just show up at his house. And I'll say, and I also got to meet Junior. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Man, that would require be... alcohol. If I, 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 don't, I don't drink anymore, so lo, lo, good for you because – It won't yeah, take that's much. What, yeah, because Junior will make appearances with enough alcohol. <laughs> hey, check this out. Like my hey, wife guys. even knows that too. She's <laughs> like, um, listen, I, I went to the last. I, I've only drinking maybe three times in the last year. And one time I went to a party, uh, for my old boss who was leaving, who I loved, and she was leaving to go to a, a promotion to another another job in the company. And she, my wife, didn't know anybody at the party, so she said, "I'm going to drop you off at the party, and then I'm going to pick you up later on. You let me know." Call me, say, come pick me up because my boss wanted me to drink because she's like, I've never seen you drink and you're so much fun and you got to drink. And I said, all right, Julie, for you, I'll drink. So I went to the party and I got drunk. Now, before on the way there, my wife says, now, listen, when I come pick you up, when I come and get you, I don't want to pull up there and see your dick out. I said, said, come on. I go, those days are over. No, I'm not going to do that. But my wife knows me. That's all I'm saying. She sounds like she's really fun. Dave, like I think she, oh, yeah, she's I love trick. her real talk, right? She's Word. like, look, just keep the dick away. Just- right. <laughs> right. Stop That's sharing. Awesome. Those days are over. Mm-hmm. It's not the trophy it once was. You're not 20 anymore. <laughs> You'll be showing it off like you used to show it off. Come on, buddy. <laughs> she's cool. <laughs> right. She's cool. The wrench, the wrench, we like her. She's an awesome yeah. wrench. <laughs> she wrenched me today, by the way. But yeah, I, I, I still love her. <laughs> love it (laughs) spoken like a true married man um (laughs) so yes thank you again dave we'll be back in two i don't even know we're doing i don't know we're doing a really cool topic though next time guaranteed right scott yes yes (laughs) really we already have it. We just Man. want to keep it a surprise. We want to keep everyone guessing. Yeah, it's, um, it's totally planned. Really, it is. It is. We have a list. I just can't remember what we agreed to do offhand. Yeah, I don't think we have agreed yeah. yet. We're actually going to be doing a, a prom time, Dave. We're going to be doing like prom movies, not prom night, but other movies that are based around dances in May. Ooh, yeah. And we might even dress up and record it and do a video really? version right? yeah yeah, yeah. We prom were, we're trying to do queen? some different stuff yeah but not we Ooh. can't do prom nights no the first prom night we could do some of the other ones like mary lou or whatnot 
Yep. So that's going to be one of our fun ones. Cause yeah, we may do a video release on that one and us Absolutely. dressed up in like nice outfits and stuff. So That'd Scott be awesome. pick up some okay. bitches. Yeah. Scott, will you wear a top hat? If yes. I can find a top hat, I will so wear it. Mm-hmm. I think you'd look good in a top hat. I don't know why. I could just picture it yeah. like a Monopoly man. Dude. Oh my God. I, I was thinking the same thing, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I could actually get a monocle guy. too. Yeah, monocle. <laughs> you're like, do not pass go. Um, <laughs> but until, <laughs> thank you again, Dave Z. And until thank next you. time, Scotty, what do you have to say? Well, before I lead us out, I just want to oh, say, fuck off, Scotty. hey, <laughs> Bo would be happy to hear this. But please go follow us on the Legion Podcast Network. Uh, go to Legion Podcasts and su- like, share, and subscribe, and leave a review for your favorite podcasts. You can find us there. We are under the Kill the Cast banner, the Friday Nightmares podcast. You know where we are, but you know, always support Legion. We are proud members of the Legion Podcast Network. And then until next time, unpleasant dreams. Bye. Oh my God, what is that noise? Oh my God. Oh, for fucking sake, Scotty. <laughs> awesome. This'll keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. Thank you.